Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy, I'm out here living life, I'm busy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. I am, of course, your host, head honcho, vegan chorizo poppy, founder of BNB, a.k.a. the bald nigga bombshell, has entered the podcast studio, and he goes by Chine Du, and the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie. Uh, I came prepared this week, so my co-host... We got Miss Two Bs, aka the Panamanian Princess, aka Miss Bring It to Your Front Door, aka Miss Inside But Outside, aka Miss Rarely Seen But Always Noticed. How you, you doing? You ate that <laughs> up. <laughs> Period, poo. Yeah, send that to me because I got to remember that one. I got you. Wow. I got you. Yo, he ate you. that. You did wheels on? Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I ain't leave you out, you my brother. Just, I mean, okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. I ain't leave you out, my brother. Will is back, ladies and gentlemen. He is Mr. Are You Sure? Mr. A, uh, AKA Mr. It Gets Biblical. AKA Mr. Apple Music's own. AKA Mr. Where There's a Will, There's a Way. Ooh. Wow. Bars. Phone drop. Phone drop. I got you. I, I told you I got you. It took me a little. There's a will. There's I got a you. Way. I got you. Thank yeah. you so much. Y'all heard man. what he said, man. You did. I'm you just did. happy to be here. And yeah, together we are motherfucking stay busy. Woo Let's go. Oh, thank you all for. Oh my god. <laughs> tuning back in. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and all of your favorite audio streaming platforms. Leave a like, a comment, share. All that good stuff. You, you know what to do by now. Um, Patreon, our podcast only fans, you can hit us at patreon.com slash staybusypod for all raw, unfiltered, unhinged content. We got more coming for you. Uh, quick weekend recap. Um, I had the pleasure of seeing Miss 2 Bs. Uh, we went out to the Need to Know Mixer. So shout out to the Need to Know family. Savon, Alex, Reggie, Pierre, Kieran, of course. Uh, Mason, all great people. Jerrica, uh, all great people. Uh, the, the the women's was out. The women, <laughs> the women they were. Was, was outside. I, I they had were. a good time. So uh, yeah, and, the baddies uh, was out. Yes, absolutely. And it was it was cool. Like it was like an industry event, but then it was like my friends in real life and just a bunch of different people mixing together. I always love those types of environments. Um, and yeah, Miss Two Bees came outside, which is like it's like my first time seeing you outside of the pod in a minute because you'd be inside you just moved and stuff so i was like right. it, was, it was good to see you come out yeah i definitely popped out and your boy jordan was like oh you had that take on transplants i'm like <laughs> are you one jordan is a transplant no nah, no he was repping jersey <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah he was yeah, repping yeah, jersey yeah, yeah, yeah. so he valid you good, good man. He's, he's a good man he's a good but but, but he, he do live in the city now yeah he do, he do. um and you also went to iman show Yes, I went to Iman's show. You know, he invited us, so I, it was only right that I popped out and showed love. Man, those rehearsals really paid off. Mm -hmm. Like, the breath control was crazy. I think I was standing by his family, mm -hmm. I assume. <laughs> I could tell by, like, how, just how proud they were, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, it was sold out, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was packed. You know, I saw Kojo there. I saw a couple familiar faces there. Um, I had to split because I wanted to go to the Need to Know mixer, but... I had a good time. I missed Styles P, but yeah. I saw H D been dope. Crazy. Yeah, he that has brought that was out dope. Styles. That's crazy. I, was, I, did I, see I was watching video the autumn that, videos, but yeah, I was like, damn. Like, no, wow. It was a good yeah. <laughs> you should have pulled up. Like mm -hmm. it was a good like I'm proud of Iman, even though we just met. I'm just like, damn, because I heard how hard he worked, yeah. see the work he put in, just even knowing his story and his journey. I was just like, Yeah, this is another W yeah. under the belt. So yeah. shout out to Iman. Yeah, no, salute, man. I mean, th throwing shows and bringing out an audience is a big deal. Um, and a lot of talented artists that he had gathered together. So I, 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 I was binge watching everyone's stories, uh, staying tapped in. Fergie Baby, of course, doing his verse was a big moment for him. I missed it. Dizzy, Tony, all them. Like, they all did their thing. So, yeah, salute to Iman. Thanks again for coming through last week. Um, that episode is available for y'all to watch and listen to. Um, had a really great time with that interview. So if y'all haven't heard it, 
They'll tap in for sure. Special interview, special artist, for real, for real. Yeah. No, seriously, for like real, he loves real. he loves it. music, yeah. and we don't yeah. have enough artists who are special. pursuing music that yeah. are passionate about it. So I appreciate him. My nigga, I'm glad you said that because we we, we 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 gonna get to that a little later <laughs> in our board meeting. But <laughs> let's jump it, into bro. this chat. Yeah. Speaking of music and business, um, our first order of business, Rock Nation, the label, has merged with Equity Distribution to make. Rock Nation distribution. Now, the equity distribution was like already working with Rock Nation. It was the distribution leg of the entire company. So now they're just yeah. coming together as one conglomerate. Um, thoughts on on that? I think that shows where we're at in music. Um, like the labels are not as useful as they used to be. Mm. Um, social media is just way too instrumental for artists. Like. They don't even really have to do interviews if they don't want to. They don't have to talk to us. Mm -hmm. Like, they could just go right on their platforms and give content out. Like, yeah. so um, shout outs to them for the change. But it just also makes me wonder, like, is niggas really making bread? I mean, th th what you said shows where we're at is so true. Because, like, I mean, early in the year, I mean, everybody saw all the layoffs and all this stuff happening yeah. yes. and everything happening. It's... It, it, this change has been year long. People just haven't. I, I feel like people are kind of starting to realizing now, like, oh, this change throughout the industry has been year long. No, like, no I think it's it, been happening. Yeah, like, like, since you know, the pandemic. Slowly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, but even even yeah. that. But like, I feel like this year was the year that everybody's like, oh, okay, like people are getting. It's, like, it's a lot like, more visible yeah. this year. And so, uh, it, more power for them doing it. But like, like, like Ebony just said, like, bro, we're in this age of like, one, who's really making money? Mm -hmm. Two, everybody just wants to. A lot of these artists and a lot of these people just want to put out records, and that's all they want to do is put out records. They don't want to talk to nobody. Mm -hmm. They don't want to rehearse that. They don't want to do nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's very, it's very cookie cutter. And if you want to be cookie cutter, we can put you into this box. Correct. And you can put out your music this way, or we can do it. That's why they have, like, a lot of these labels have tiers of deals and yeah. stuff. And, you know, sometimes the distro deal, they come in different tiers. Or some, but a lot of these people, a lot of these artists, they're just on the first tier, mm -hmm. and they just want some you know, money and just want to build, put their records out. And, like, labels are like, okay, bet, we can do that for you. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah, and so with the move, Shari Bryant, who was the <laughs> co-president of Rock Nation, the label, she has stepped down. That gagged me. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. I read that, like, three times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that pretty, gagged me. Pretty insane. Like, you know, I think I think when I was younger and maybe wasn't as aware of these things, like a merger like this, I'd be like, oh, shit, big deal. But now it's kind of like, hmm, like, are y'all coming together out of necessity? Like, can y'all not exist as separate and even though again they're under the same type of company so it's just it's just very interesting um but yeah she was co-president uh back in she became co-president in 2019 um after benny uh poe i guess <clears throat> departed um and they were able to sign artists like meta uh amber ruben vincent kaylin for real for real um so yeah that makes sense why the label gone child <clears throat> The yeah, hell? not a lot of people. So not not a, anybody not, you name just yeah, now. Like, not, all the people you name just now, and that's I'm not saying that they're not talented, mm -hmm. but they ain't making no noise for real. Yeah, I, I, Meta's dope. I like Meta. I hope I'm saying her name right. And also. I, you know. I was just about to say that's how you pronounce her name. I was uh, saying Maeta. That, that maybe that's it. <laughs> maybe that's it. But I, I'm my mother's child. I pronounce I might everything be in Spanish. <laughs> I might be ignorant, but <laughs> but either way, <laughs> I was like Maeta. Like Ma Maeta would make sense. It makes. I sense. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded better. I don't know. Hey, it sounds real good, it's especially real with the accent. Yeah. Like, okay. But my mom does that. I get that from yeah. her. She pronounces everyone's name with a Spanish accent. Yeah. So I'm like. <laughs> but no no disrespect, Meta or Maeta. Um but, <laughs> but like, yeah, she's dope. She she was just touring with, with Chris Brown. Um she puts out really good music. But yeah, she, she she don't got like crazy motion right now. Uh or ever. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. And neither did Kaylin for real. Like be was, for real, was, for real. Just, be for, for real, real, for real. I mean for real though. Like honestly <laughs> like, though. Honestly though. Honestly, seriously. Though. Honestly though. And I, I'm not just you're being not. A, <laughs> No, like it's just She's being for real, bro. It didn't seem like they wanted to win. Like the management yeah. side has the legacy acts. Like it that just too. does not seem like anyone is doing anything to win. And then when I speak, people are just like, "Oh, you're bored and seeking smoke." But <laughs> it's like, "Nah." <laughs> shit is whack and you're basically telling me not to believe my own eyes and ears and that's mm. not happening. Yeah, people want you to be gaslighting, complacent me. with them. <laughs> Yeah. Can or, you believe that or, shit? No, I mean it's it's 
Yeah, it's almost like what you said. It's like you don't want like the eye test. And, you know, people use that in sports, music. You can use it in a lot of things in mm-hmm. life. Like the eye test, you tell me not to believe what I'm seeing with my eyes and hear with my ears. Yes. Like, Please. Niggas try to tell that. me little baby was nice. <laughs> what I said. It, it oh. somehow always comes <laughs> back, <laughs> back to, what I said. to Le Bebe. <laughs> <laughs> we could be talking about fucking quantum <laughs> physics and Miss Two Bs will find a way to be like, that that little bebe nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's just like I've been saying that and people are like, nah, he's hard. He's the next Wayne. He's the next this. And he's literally been doing the same thing he's been doing his entire career. And now everyone's like, he sucks. And I'm like, no, y'all are frauds. But the positive part about this, I remember thinking like, you know, hip hop has been exploited beyond repair. And the best era of hip hop was when it was like funded by drug dealers. So now with this like new like indie renaissance going on, it's kind of giving control back to the artists and the people who, you know, drive the culture. So maybe we can see like a resurgence of like, you know, just dope, authentic, passionate music. I mean, yeah, they they have more autonomy than ever before. But I think the problem is a lot of them want to make money and the money is to be made with the big the big names, the big backing, you know? So, and again, this is something we're going to get into later with Tyler's uh, interview that he did. But yeah, I mean, I mean, in an ideal world, what you just explained would be correct. But as we've said multiple times on the show, it's not, it's not about the love for the music. It's about making what is marketable and you can make a bag off of and not necessarily art. So yeah, um, it's tough, but yeah, I mean, again, I do like, some of these people under the under the Rock Nation tag, um, I don't know how viable they will be in long term or to, to a certain tier compared to other artists. But yeah, very, very, very interesting. Um, so that is a thing. Um, let's jump into, there's been a lot of talk about race and culture and all this stuff within the hip hop media space. Um, I actually want to start with uh, Michael Rubin. <laughs> Michael Rubin was a guest on The Breakfast Club this week, and he was talking about his good friend Meek Mill. And he was talking about the hate and the jokes that Meek Mill receives. And, you know, he was he was upset that people were joking about him being gay and saying there's not a there's not a gay bone in Meek Mill's body. (laughs) And he eventually got to the point where he was talking about the hate within the black community. He called it black hate on hate. And the Kufis and the pitchforks and the fucking coconut oil and everything was, was taken out and thrown at Michael Rubin (laughs) when those comments were publicized. And, you know, I, I think they are, there are layers to the situation. Number one, as, as a white man, you just shouldn't be, you can feel how you feel about the community from the outside looking in. Uh, Obviously there's only, it it only goes to a certain point because you're not within it. So like, and you just have a different, perspective on it than people in it but to publicly get on a platform with black voices and tell them what i don't like about the black community is nigga no who who asked you what 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 you like (laughs) or don't like about the black community even if (laughs) even if black people are black people's worst enemies sometimes we there is a lot of hate within the community there the niggas do hate niggas niggas be enemies of progress to other niggas like this, this is a very factual thing so it's one of those things where it's like you might have been onto something, but you shouldn't have said it. Like we don't we don't want to hear that from you at all. Cause like in the reverse, if we give our thoughts on on your on your community, like it looks crazy. So look at Nick Cannon. Right. Exactly. Oh my God. So <laughs> there, the, there there was that. And it was just kind of the like and the I I, you know, I think the unfortunate part is like people focused on the major pull quote from his rant. And like, th- there was a point where he was like, mm, I-, I know I- I'm a rich white guy saying this, or I know I'm going to get killed for it. So he was aware that he was speaking from a place of privilege or speaking on something he maybe shouldn't have spoken on at all, but you can always just not speak on it at all <laughs> rather than giving the statement, but being like, mm, but I'm a rich white guy who shouldn't be saying this. So, um, he he got smoked for that. And had to come to Twitter and and apologize for it. Said he got the call. Probably got the this is hove call you know or he text. Did. <laughs> he, he he said it was someone he he, he really did. respects. He probably did. Didn't use any names, and he was just like, 
I just want to encourage people to uplift one another, support one another, show love. And it's like, you know what? You can do all of that without giving your white opinion on the black community. Give us some money. Even even if it may have been factual. And you know, and, and that's the other thing. I think I think he feels a level of comfort because mm-hmm. he's embraced by Meek Mill. He's embraced by Lil Baby. He's embraced by Drake. He's embraced by Jay Z. He has all white party. Like, yeah, like <laughs> like like the the, the the all white party might as well be like fucking the I'm the cool black people party the fucking rap caviar yes. playlist and mm-hmm. then like the pop caviar playlist and then like the film caviar <laughs> playlist all brought together like all all, all the a listers sports yeah mm-hmm. sports too yeah yeah, yeah the, sports should be crazy. yeah like just all all these niggas coming together and like he's he's kind of hosting that so <clears throat> it's it's reasonable to believe he feels empowered or aware or in touch especially because he stood by Meek when Meek was going through. You know his his stuff in court with with that judge who, as Michael Rubin said, was hating on him. She um, was. Though. Oh no, no, she was. Yeah, I, she I, was. I, I always do. Air, I, I, I always do air quotes, and I don't know why because I actually meant what I was saying, but I air quoted it. I'm sorry. Sometimes I, I, it's just fun to do. I, I, that's that's true too. Also because I, I was quoting him, not like I was like right, right. Not like I was devaluing mm-hmm. what he was saying. I was like actually quoting him, but um. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to work on that, listeners. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so he stood by me. Like, he worked with Robert Kraft and Jay-Z, like, all this stuff with the NFL. Like, so he he feels close to the stuff. But you're, you're just given a little too strong of, of an opinion. Like, it's kind of like for me when I used to work with white editors when I was writing, and they would try to tell me about something about hip-hop. I'm like, you, you're a guest. You, you might like it, but you, you don't get it. So... <laughs> That's that's kind of how I looked at it too. How how y'all feel about the Michael Rubin thing? I saw that and shook my head and said, "That's little baby fault." <laughs> and Meek Mill, no, Ebony, she just <laughs> mind you. I know the timing is crazy, Bro, but I what? literally tweeted that. I said, "This is little baby and Meek Mill fault." <laughs> what because did little baby do? Because they tried to make him a household name, and now he feels comfortable speaking on our culture. I I, so he was kind of a household name. Prior to in, that. in the black community in hip hop, he 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 was a minority stake owner in the Philadelphia 76ers. sixers. In in hip hop, was he a household name in hip hop? I think that the the um <laughs> the the way that sports and music run parallel, that a, a lot of the answer niggas, is no. If you gotta say mad ants words no, to no. say okay 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 okay, I disagree. He, he, he wasn't. He, Donald he, Trump was more wait, of a household wait, 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 name yeah, yeah. than him. I hip hop. Yeah, like I would say he was no. I wouldn't say he was a household name. And Meek the, Mill but, and the, Lil but, Baby but try to do I that. I do understand what you're saying. I, 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 did Donald 100%. Trump and Ruben is a different compare. Donald Trump had a had a, a a reality TV show, The Apprentice, on syndicated television or, or whatever. Like it was like yes, of course Michael he he, Rubin he, he was a bigger face than Ruben. No, nah, I, 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 people knew about Michael Ruben before. Well, before all this, I just thought it was funny to see a Jewish man go on a platform. <laughs> talking like that um and you know i'm not gonna sit here and regurgitate things that have already been discussed and stuff that he saw Mm -hmm. um on the other end i do you know him and meek probably had private conversations about you know the gay rumors and allegations Mm -hmm. and everything that happened and um you know i know that really hurt meek especially when he tweeted that his son went to school and they were just like oh your dad's gay yes, and that, sucks. Um, <clears throat> that that's hurtful that sucks. and i would like for like people to stop dogpiling on meek but i would also like for him to stop setting himself up that's and and that's the See, thing it's like yeah. i i don't want to use this as a Meek be bringing it on himself, but he but he do he be bringing does. it on himself. He tweeted something literally yesterday, and I was like, "Rami." <laughs> the thing is, like, I, you know what my thought was because it, it, we had a I had a big uh, discussion with my friends too, just about it too, and people were people were like, you know, it's the right message, it's the wrong messenger, and this and that, and no it's way. like, and it's like, yeah, whatever. But like in our community, at the end of the day, bro, you always see it all the time on Twitter when people are like, "Yeah, the fat's cool, but you are gonna get these jokes." Yeah, and that's what yeah. we that's what we do. It's it's, it's a jokes over facts. It's a jokes culture. over facts culture for yeah. for real now. Like for real yeah. now, you gonna get some jokes. Yeah. Like bro, you took pictures with some soggy fries <laughs> in your legs. Like you said, like niggas are gonna pay. We, we're gonna make fun of you, bro. And, and, and also, like come on, bro, you doing like we didn't you do? know you lost a bet when you were bunny hopping. Like like mm-hmm. like people aren't gonna mm-hmm. be responsible like us oh, and go try yeah. to figure it out, nigga. We saw you bunny hopping exactly. with a white man. You, I don't care, responsible <laughs> exactly. or not. That's the first thing I saw. Like. <laughs> yeah. 
what are you doing, <laughs> like, bro? bro? We gonna roast you, bro. Yeah. Like you about to get these jokes? Like you yeah. think, yeah, like you people are gonna be like responsible? Like, hold on, wait, 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 wait. He's bunny hopping because he lost a, a million like, dollar bet. And why are you even like, placing like, such a bet? Like, like no one even cares, bro. Like, <laughs> why are you placing yeah. such a bet? Exactly. Yeah. Too. Anyway, it's just he just puts himself in situations that like. Which I think, but being, but but to like for me, like outside looking in, maybe he's just like a goofy, funny nigga. Oh yeah, and like that's cool. For sure. Yeah, and like I know niggas but, like that. I'm a goofy, funny nigga. Yeah, like, but it's I, cool. I, I, as a goofy, funny nigga, niggas will up. laugh at yeah, you. Yeah, like you, you gonna you get the joke. You you gonna be sure. part of the joke. Yes, and then you are going to be, be the joke. The joke. Exactly. <laughs> the one thing I hate exactly. what he does is like he act like we all billionaires on Twitter. <laughs> Bro, oh pick up your phone and ask Hove or Michael Rubin what you asking us. Like he be asking. No, because it's. So funny because like he'll he'll like, he'll have this like wild <laughs> profound thought one day Insane. and then like the other day he'll ask like some like simple ass shit is like Meek why are you asking Twitter if you don't go to Google bro or something like or like like yeah bro he be yeah. asking. Yo, that was the craziest thing. Why you why you talking to us like we're millionaires and like, billionaires? Bro, pay my mortgage. Son. He be asking like, people. He be asking people the most crazy, profound shit. And the next day, it'd be like a a picture of fries. So like, it's like, bro, what? It's just or, or that picture when he was like this. Yo, he, and that one is recent. That yeah. wasn't bro, even a throwback. That, that, one, that was when he freestyled the munch. Bro, bro, but hold on, wait. I want to vindicate him for that moment. I appreciated Meek. For remixing Munch Because yeah. that's what Artists used to do When there was a hot yeah. record You gonna hop yeah. on it And remix it He so put I, out a whole Mixtape of, do, of, of Feel uh, those me joints. I dope. appreciated the effort Because it's like We need to get back To those things But like did The picture didn't have to go <laughs> Did y'all see The picture was funny So after that picture Did y'all see the picture With him the orangutan In the front seat In the orangutan <laughs> So it's like It's like bro It's like come on It's like And I, I, I think I tweeted I think I tweeted I said do you wanna I said I said do you wanna Cry in the car Or you yeah. cry or do you wanna I'm the RR with the orangutan and me. <laughs> Everybody was like, I guess I'll choose the right thing and me. Like, like, yo, bro. Meek is the gift that he's keeps crazy. on giving, bro. He's no. like, he's funny as hell. Like he's, bro. He, he's a bozo sometimes, he's funny, but he's dude. so funny sometimes. It's like, yes, I think people have. <laughs> <laughs> have exaggerated how much of an easy target he is to where yes. if he says anything, niggas yeah, get on him. And I want that to stop. Yeah, that's the corny yeah, part. Yeah, but that's the corny like, part. Like it's it, it's not fully unwarranted, but it's like all right, you, you like you you niggas do too much. Too three much. You, you niggas do too much. So. I feel the same way. I felt like with Bow Wow when he was the butt of the joke mm-hmm. on the internet. Yeah, like it was always... these are legends. Please, like I understand that they might not be like you know social media savvy or have the best content or whatever, but yeah. enough. Right. So right. Soldier Boy might fall in that category too but Soulja Boy is just so fucking funny and unhinged that (laughs) we don't care yeah 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 facts yeah, but yeah the Michael Rubin thing was a lot I'm glad he apologized it's just it's another instance where it's like you should have known really not to cross that line before having to then come back and apologize like it's, it's, it's one of those scenarios where people just they'll accept the apology but it's like you shouldn't have even had to apologize because you shouldn't have said anything so Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do think it raised an important conversation. I think it's a conversation that we, as the people of the cult- culture, should be having. Like, because he kind of made it seem like the hate is holds us back. And it's like, okay, I think maybe to a certain degree, yes, but it's ultimately the system of where you, who is a part of the majority and has the power, y'all are holding us back more than us hating ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like, Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I think it just takes him having the ability to step outside of his privilege and recognize that. And it's not easy for, you know, people in those situations. So that's that. Um, Next, we got Post Malone versus the culture. So the latest discourse um, has been how Post Malone has just fully, fully transitioned into this... Um, this motherfucking uh, <laughs> country <laughs> artist thing. And now it's like uh, people are resurfacing tweets where Lil B predicted it, said that he's a culture vulture and he's going to fully go country. And um, Post Malone recently said, like, people call him a culture vulture or a one-hit wonder, hurt his feelings and made him drink a lot, like all of this stuff. Like, how did y'all feel about Post Malone when he first debuted and seeing his transition over time? Like, what are your thoughts on him? I I don't consume anything that has white, and like, I never even watch Friends, bro. <laughs> like, word, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Like, my name is Ebony. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, even my mom makes fun of me. She's like, I gave my daughter the right name. She is pro-black. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, yeah. Um, I never thought that... I never had thoughts on him. Yeah. Um, you know, I went to Edward R. Murrow with Joey Badass. So when I saw like he like co-wrote Rockstar, I'm like, all right, let me listen to Salute. it. My friend, my friend worked on this, so you let me listen to it. Because that, that shit's like paid. what? Is, 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 still shit. getting paid. Bro, Rockstar's diamond, right? Yes, yeah, it's diamond because it, it was yes. on his diamond collection. That's project. one of the biggest. Feel songs me? Ever. So I'm like, all right, my friend involved Joey in Rich. that. Damn, and my boy never signed. There we go. He's up. So I was just like, all right, you know, my friend a part of that. Let me listen to it. But um, I got turned off from Post Malone when he said um, hip hop. I don't want to quote it because this, this is not what he said verbatim. But he basically said, like, hip hop isn't deep. Mm. And mm. like, you know, if he's like ever sad or, you know, feeling other emotions, like he just wouldn't go to hip hop. Mm-hmm. And um, that's when I was just like, all right, get this vulture out of here, bro. Excuse me? Yeah. yeah, like, you didn't do your 10,000 hours. You Excuse don't know me? those type of songs. I mean, they're not being marketed in mainstream because they don't sell. Yeah. But um, there are a lot of songs that are, you know, <clears throat> where the artist is showing a lot of, you know, introspective and being vulnerable and mm-hmm. doing the things. And I, from that moment, I knew. I was just like, all right, another Miley. Like, get him up out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I worked with Post um, early on in his career, just throwing shows and stuff in Ohio, just bringing, just, you know, want to bring new artists and this and that. And then um, I went down to the first um, Rolling Loud Miami, and he performed there with... Uh, with Key and you know he did White Iverson and it was crazy you know it yeah. was cool like Jack it was Ira. it was a nice it was a nice wait I think Joey wrote White Iverson I don't remember which one but it's from the debut okay but so like you know it 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 was dope and then I don't know it, it, to me I don't know if I always felt it but I'm not surprised what he's what he's doing or how he's like whatever he transitioned to yeah. because one I feel like he was just like a young <clears throat> ass kid around black people yeah. wearing out okay i made white iris i'm about to braid my hair i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and then like yes he was damn for sure appropriating our shit and just yeah. you know being around and just being influenced and then you know to see where he's at now is like just i don't know i i, I feel like we've seen the story so many times that it's like not surprising for real and um yeah, you can see the transition from, especially when he started making, especially when the music became successful as well too. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, it's like he wasn't, it's like wasn't like he was missing. Like he had rock star, then he had you know some of like a lot of those. Post Malone has hits. Bro. Yeah, he, I mean yeah. he he, he, hits. he he popped off immediately. It yeah, was anthems, it was like for real anthems. It like, was White Iverson, then it was Too Young, mm-hmm. then it was like Too Young, Better Now, mm-hmm. then it was mm-hmm. Deja Vu, then it was Rockstar and Psycho and Circles. S- S- Sunflower is double diamond. Yeah. When's the last time you heard of a song being double diamond? Yeah, that's crazy. Like h- him and Sway Lee they could never make a song again, and that they're yeah. good. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, nah, he's, he's so he's like got a yeah. Lot. I I don't I don't know if I say that to say that like, oh, he's just so big that he had to like drop the black act mm-hmm. because that's corny too. But I I just I don't know, bro. He's a white dude from Texas. Yeah, he got influenced by some black kids young, and then he kind of just Influ- how was he influenced by black kids in person or on the internet? Probably both. Bro. He was I believe he was born in Syracuse and then moved to Texas. Oh, I don't even know that. Um. Because yeah. the way social media has like globalized everything, <sighs> it's it's possible that the influence could have came from the internet alone mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, not in real life. Mm-hmm, so that's why I ask mm-hmm. because like even like I have family visiting from Panama and like my aunt is playing a bunch of like old salsa from the nineties and I didn't even realize like they don't make salsa anymore. There are no salseros, like mm-hmm. it's only Latin trap. Everyone's mm-hmm. trying to be mm-hmm. a rapper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would want to know. I want to find out who discovered him too. Like, what was he like when y'all first? Post? Yeah, like who Word. who discovered him? Cause yeah, yeah, cause you know, some sometimes sometimes these artists and these people they be having that that act and that stuff ready before you even meet niggas. So like when you meet niggas, it's not like like you said the internet could have been influencing him before. Where when he when he got around the people that were discovering him, he already had the. Oh, I'm about to be doing white Iris. I'm be braiding my hair. What up, this. niggers? Yeah, shit like that. <laughs> what up, nakers? And then after he, after after he got the success, and he got 
he kind of just was able to drop, like wash it off a little bit easier. Yeah. Like okay, not like, wash it off. So, he kicked yeah. it up to God. So, yeah, like so, yeah, whatever. Real like, quick, he was born in Cuse, moved to Texas when he was nine, moved to L.A. Um, later on, and he met producer FKI first see, yeah. and Sauce Lord Rich. Uh, they the, the production team FKI. Um, and he also met someone named Rex Kudo, and they helped him make White Iverson. And they, they, they were producers who were kind of deep mm-hmm. in the game already. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, he got early cosigns from Mac Miller and Wiz Khalifa, which kind of helped him yeah. to propel. Um, and, yeah, and then by the time he dropped his first album, <laughs> it was he was working with 50 and Thug Shit. and Kanye and all yeah. this. Performed at Kylie Jenner's 18th birthday party. You know what people people talk about? I was a lit party. Yeah, you know what people talk mean. about plants, like, one of the last real plants is like post like post Malone was like they planted. planted they like they made sure that nigga was about to go yeah. his first album he's working with Kanye Fifty and I'm like because I'm like wait what he did yeah. all of that the debut like he was it was yeah this was leading into or it was on the debut I'm pretty they sure. saw the success of White Iverson and they just you know people like yeah yeah um but yeah he, it, it, I I I was never a fan that he had tracks that I liked right and so. I, I didn't I, I didn't feel like betrayed like oh this thing is doing country now exactly. how, how dare he exactly. how dare you not be the post exactly. Malone that exactly. I love like because exactly. I never I never loved him he, he, like a record uh, you know if he mm-hmm. put out a good record I fucked with it Circles Circles mm-hmm. Fire I fuck with that Sunflower dope mm-hmm. I fuck with the collab with Beyonce yeah so Psycho <laughs> like like he, he he made good records but it was never like he never showed up on my Spotify wrapped he was he's never my go to if I hear something I fuck with it and it's just like again it's not surprising like that was around the time where hip hop really like y'all have been saying became like the biggest genre so you hear pop artists using trap drums you hear country artists working with rappers so uh, someone like him coming into the space with his unique look and unique sound and trying to make hip hop doesn't doesn't surprise me at all you know you get what you get out of it what you can and then for someone like him, you, you step away. Um, that shit wasn't unique. What do y'all think about... Uh, this is a whole different conversation, but, like, what do y'all think about someone like uh, Jack Harlow? Like, is that 2.0? <laughs> I hate that I like them. See? Like, that's what I'm Jack saying. Jack, my guy. That's why I, I said like them. Is, is, Jack is, is my guy. Is it 2.0? Is it, like... You, 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 that's Drake's son. Like, you know no, what annoys I mean, me uh, yeah, is, hey, hey, for hey. years, people have been predicting Jack is going to go the Post Malone yeah. route and pick up a guitar. And I'm like, I don't think Jack that's loves happening. hip-hop too much. Yeah, that's not like, happening. Jack grew up, like, I, I know the people he grew up with. Like, the homies, like, he grew up around niggas. He, he, he's a hip-hop fan, like, a real, like... So he said the N-word. <laughs> he probably did. <laughs> he probably mm. did growing up. Mm-hmm. But, like, regardless, like, well, not regardless. That's, that's, that's a problem. No, but, no, I know what you, <laughs> yeah. as an Afro-Latina, I let a couple of my Spanish yeah, homies say it when man, growing like, up. I get it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the whole N-word politics thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but Jack <laughs> seems like a true, like, and we've said this a lot the last couple of weeks, a true student of the game with mm-hmm. regards to hip-hop. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't see him ever stepping away from it. Like he's you like like you said he's Drake's son, so he's he's jumping into the pop stuff a little more. Tracks like First Class, tracks like Loving on Me, but they're still rooted in hip hop. Like he he's never made a full and them pop type and record. And them bitches are going number one. Yeah, bro, he's, like, he's cooking. He's, like, cooking. he's cooking. I think I, I, the reason I I say him is because I like him too, and he's you know he's from Louisville, that's close to Cincinnati. He's really like I I know that area. Yeah. Um, I think he's gonna be a superstar. I think I he think he is. I think I think he's gonna start getting to acting more the way he you know yeah the, the way he's kind of starting to do now. Yeah, but. I was, I just asked because I feel like a lot of people correlate them two together. Yeah, but yeah. I yeah. feel like mm. Jack is a little bit. Jack is in that Mac Miller. Yeah, exactly. Realm for black people exactly. or like our culture, like we look at him like yeah, yeah, and we look at Post like a uh, right. Jack Mac uh, uh, Eminem. Eminem, of course. Mm-hmm. Like th- yeah. those those are mm-hmm. hip hop niggas. Like and like mm-hmm. even when Mac made his transition into more jazz type stuff, like he like I'm still black. Yeah, we still, we still viewed still him as very soulful. Yeah, it was like very, like. I respect it all. Doing. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And and it was beautiful music. Um, but Jack, like, I remember Jack, like a couple years ago, no, it was last year, Jack put out that full rap project, like all like backpack type beats and like it didn't sell crazy, but it was like, okay, like Post Malone would have never done this. Post He's Malone would have never made a full backpack type rap uh, project. Like Jack had like elite, pro- I can't think of them off the top of my head, but like elite producers that are like highly sought after in hip hop nowadays to create that type of sound. 
did. And this is after the success of First Class. This is after he went number one with Lil Nas X. Like, but then he realized, all right, it's time to make another pop joint. So this is so he, <laughs> Jack went and made Loving on Me. But it's still a hip hop type track, though. It's and still rooted it. in hip hop. So you can't be mad at it. But yeah, post, I, I, I truly don't care. So people yeah. who make a big deal out of it, like, yeah, it sucks to see people viewing our genre as the gateway to them getting to where they really want to be. But that's the gift and the curse of and music and the, the genre being so popular Facts. is everyone in the world here hears it. Everyone in the world wants to try their hand at it and they don't love it or feel connected to it the same way. So they're going to use it to pop off and then go right. I mean, it's working for him. Like, like this nigga's selling crazy in, in, in country now. So it's like, hey, man, like, good good, good for you. Do what you got to do. Just just stay away now. <laughs> and Beyonce used them, too. So we good, y'all. We good. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, Next up. So this I'm not too fully informed on. I feel like you you was tapped in, so you can help me out. Uh, Marlon Wayans versus DJ Vlad. What the fuck was going on with them? Yeah, I wasn't tapped in. <laughs> what, what happened? Man. What else? No, yeah. <laughs> what happened? I just saw it all. I, mind you, I just retweeted the first tweet. Like, okay, what's happening <laughs> mm-hmm. here? Marlon Wayans going against a culture vulture eyes. Lit. And then he <laughs> just kept going and going mm-hmm. and going. Apparently, um, Vlad didn't want to pay his fee. Mm. Pay, pay what fee? The 40k Mar- fee Mar- to Mar- interview. Yeah. yeah. His fee to interview. Oh, Marlon Mar- Mar- is charging people to interview. No, him. Vlad pays people. Well, well, but, but yes, he is. Well, okay. He just asked, does, Mar- does Marlon charge? Well, he was getting lowballed. Marlon felt like he was getting lowballed. But I don't think oh. Marlon normally char- charges people. Okay. I think that is okay. standard practice for Vlad's platform. He pays yeah, to people. pay Okay. Yeah. Oh, that, that makes sense. And Marlon wanted a, a certain. Mm- him out and mm-hmm. it wasn't honored and you know he just went in on him online I and i was just like do we know how much he wanted that we don't know okay. but i do think that um whatever he's asking for is worth it because anytime marlon does anything on the internet it's gonna huge go crazy deal. yeah so you're gonna recoup it's not like he has like a huge digital presence and like he's like so accessible and you're gonna see him all the time like he's a good time i i did social content with him for um charlemagne show so i understand Marlon where Wayans? he's coming from yeah that's fire yeah that's fire i would that, that's some shit i would like tell my kids like, yeah low-key low-key well, i just drop fire. it in there casually Gangsta, like because he's like their family's a legend longevity legend. bro next like, le- like next longevity. level like, they deserve more love legends yeah so yeah Vlad, respect the black man do yeah. they have stars in hollywood like the um, like do they they have hollywood walking stars fame oh, that's we'll a good see. question they need them we'll all of them the whole family too. the whole family yeah the whole family bro you they see um damien and his son they're about to do a series together i would love to see a wayne's bro biopic but you know like like michael rubin said black won't black hate my I don't know where the is, family you, stands. You know what's really interesting to me that I really got hip to, like, just a few years ago? I didn't know that the older brother was that hidden now and, like, that. And that makes me hella interested. Like, that's why you said a biopic would be fire, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, what happened? Like, I want to know, like, what. Just, like, sometimes people just want to, like, get out of the spot, get out of everything. And just, yeah. like, it just seems like he kind of, I don't know. And you I'm- see that video of them? I think it was, was it Christmas or, like. It was past the year, and they they caught a video of him like going to get food from somewhere, and it was like it was like the rarest shit ever. But it was cool as fuck. Mm. Like, I think in Living Color put like a target on their backs. Mm. Like they did a lot of things first, then yeah. a lot of things. Mm. You know, when it wasn't cool for black people to do it, so. he took he took the brunt of a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah. like I, I, I think recently there was some headline about like someone was getting on them for wearing dresses, men wearing dresses, and, yeah. and he was like, "It's comedy, like." Mm-hmm. Like shit like that, and people were cooking them for it. It's like, hey, the shit, like, well, white chicks, one of my funny, that's just funny as fuck, bro. I, I watch that every time it's but on. You know, you know what's time. crazy though? Like, that's something about the the black community thing that, like, people, like, you know, how they say, like, oh, there's like that little conspiracy theory, like, black men gotta wear dresses to get on or be be famous, or, or not to be famous, but to like take their career to the next level and you know they they get on about that but at the end of the day it's like it's comedy yeah you know, like this is like whatever and it's like yeah the other side of that is there are comics that are super funny that has never well i don't remember if cat williams ever dressed as a woman did. i don't think so. i don't think he ever i don't think I don't he ever think did so. no. yeah and um you true. know a lot of black women you mm-hmm. know it is kind of making fun of us in a sense mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and that goes back to that black on black hate yeah that's, that's what boy Ruben was mm-hmm. talking about yeah. so mm-hmm. i think like where that's 
stems from is really what is problematic about it because it's like why are you doing that or are you are you imitating your mom your mm-hmm. aunt your sister mm-hmm. like it's just mm-hmm. I, yeah it, it's almost borderline offensive certain times but yeah. I be I laugh at everything and that's my problem yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I honestly like I'm I'm so weird with social media now like certain clips if I see them a lot I'll go watch and then I'll go see what people are talking about but like the Vlad a- anytime I see DJ Vlad tweets I just kind of scroll by and don't even read them but I did see like he was adding Marlon Wayans I was like hmm I'll, I'll read this eventually and then I never did so yeah, <laughs> here we are they yeah, fighting over that yeah well pay, pay, pay that man his fee like he's Marlon's definitely worth more than four and he better be paying Boosie Facts. But Boozy definitely getting paid. T- Tony Ayo definitely getting paid. Well, <laughs> like, like, they on payroll. Yo, them, 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 them <laughs> niggas is DJ first team all DJ Vlad, bro. They, they, they be there every month. <laughs> Something different. Yeah, yo, yeah. Boosie go there just because he don't have an Instagram no more. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> we end up covering a lot of their their comments for work coming from DJ Vlad. So I I, I watch more DJ Vlad clips than than I would like to <laughs> because of work. So. Yeah, but uh, lastly, with race and hip hop, uh, so a group by the name of KTO, um, they promoted a hip hop media panel, and this panel had zero black people on it. Now we do know two people who are on the panel. So shout out to Gay P on the radar. That's family. Uh, shout out to Annabelle. She's been on the show before. Um, the other people on the panel were Arshan. He is the host and founder of Kids Takeover. And then he had the founders of Side Talk, Jack and Trent. And this got posted on um, social media and pe- people were just kind of went crazy. Uh, about it i did see annabelle put out a tweet about it i have the tweet here so i will read it uh we absolutely should be centering black voices in discussions on hip-hop and i should have taken this into consideration when accepting my invitation to be on this panel okay currently putting lots of thought into what the best move is from here i hope y'all know how much i love music how deeply i respect all of my peers in the hip-hop and music media space and how important it is to me that i navigate the hip-hop space as mindfully and respectfully as I can. I mean, and, and and that's the tough thing is like, all respect to Annabelle. Annabelle's created a, a great platform, like interviewed great people. Um, and a lot of people within the culture do have this respect for her. So it's like, and she shows love to the music in like a very respectful, responsible way. Like it, it to me, it's never come off as like her being a, a, a vulture, mm-hmm. you know, trying to just... Mm-hmm you know, gain popularity without doing anything, without, like, doing anything for the space. Like, she puts people on her playlist, she interviews artists, all that. So, um, like, obviously, Annabelle and Gabe, I had no problem with them being on there. I, I, something like that, though, like, I saw it, and it was like, I don't, I don't react to shit immediately when I, when I, like, I don't get angry immediately, but I'm just like, as I sit and I, you know, kind of see how people are feeling, I'm like, I mean, yeah, I guess... Well, not even, I guess. You should have black voices on a hip-hop panel. But, In New York. But I'm not surprised because, like, uh, the reality is it's not just our voices in the space and people don't, re- like, people will go for the bigger name over the 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 voice that may be able to speak better to something. Mm-hmm. And, again, that's no disrespect to Annabelle because I think Annabelle does know her stuff. But, you know, you look at, the following she has you look at what gabe is doing and I, I love gabe gabe's great so i'm not again i'm not mad at either of them but you you would go with one of them before you would go with 100 someone who is who maybe isn't yeah. you know doesn't have the yeah. same social media yeah. following and yeah. so that's just the you reality you couldn't even it. name a platform right there yeah. aren't many non mm-hmm. like even myself i could even put myself like i'm not as consistent as i could or should be mm-hmm. so i'm not gonna be upset that like you know someone like gabe mm-hmm. or Annabelle or Sidewalk Talk, mm-hmm. they get these opportunities. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I enjoy their content yeah. as well. Like, especially Sidewalk Talk, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and I think even the KTO platform is pretty dope. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, for me, that's not considered hip hop media. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's just what the, it is. That's the other thing. That's social media, bite size, you know, microwavable content, like fun content, short mm-hmm. form fun content. That is what it is to me. Yeah. So, you know, if we're talking about people who are driving the culture, you know, 
based on what I've known, the only person who's really platforming and like, you know, driving culture on that lineup would be Gabe, but that could also be my bias speaking. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, yeah. Cause cause and we're we're all aware of it. We all see it. He does the interviews, he he does the freestyles, he hosts producer camps. Like Gabe is really labels doing it. want to sign you if yeah. you go on, on the radar. Like I don't do digital marketing anymore, but if anyone hits mm-hmm. me up about it, that's a goal mm-hmm. to get on on mm-hmm. the radar. Yeah. So, you know, I respect it. And I remember like during the pandemic when he was really going hard. And even giving me advice, he's the reason I made a 2 TV TikTok because mm-hmm. he's like, yo, go on there. It's growing, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. and Gabe's always been good with the digital. Um, I know him from Power 105 when we both interned there. Yeah. So, you can't be mad at the the cards people are dealt with. But, yeah, they they wild the fuck out. The yeah. only black person there is Joey Badass. Like, <laughs> what? He's like famous as fuck. And, yeah. And, like, made it. Like, yeah. And but the, he has a white-ass fan base, though, music. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Makes real and and the, that's the other thing. And I've seen this in, like, in, like, other spaces is when they can get a good black voice. Not that Joey isn't a good black voice. They always go for the most famous black person. Like, and so, the safest. Yeah, yeah. So like, Joey was probably the the per, the biggest bl- uh, hat rapper, black rapper that they had access to. So so they went with him as opposed to bringing in a black hip hop media person or a black hip hop content creator or, or whatever the case is. So it's just always interesting how these non black pla- platforms go about who they select to to speak at these things. Right. Um, KTO did put out a statement. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but. <clears throat> I want to address some feedback on the mini panel. As you may know, we may we have our community event with Joey Badass coming up. To preface, I love hip hop. I'm 100% a guest in this culture that I cover. Let me be super clear on that. That's bolded and underlined. Um, our, our interviews are solely to inspire young people. I don't cover violence, no drama, purely music, super positive, which anyone who follows KTO knows. Is that at the shade room? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good clock, y'all. Not like y'all others. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you ate that. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, the free live event was a new idea to get fans a voice in real life. The first one was from uh, uh, the plan was an interview. Yeah, I'm not reading this whole thing. Pretty much yeah. just acknowledging they're a guest. Oh, I, I see another bolded underline statement. I fully see why they'd be offended off bat. Um, they, was, they said he said he reached out to multiple founders. Okay. Founders, I don't know what he means by Who, founders. Who, Michael Rubin? He should have he maybe, he said that. Yeah. He, he, he said, those you see on the flyer, but also a ton you don't see. You don't see is bolded and underlined, too. Um, he said, who in NY, based on a media company, academics, too big, can't get in contact. Joe Budden, same thing. Plaque uh, Boy Max. I don't even know who the fuck Plaque Boy Max is. I can't see is. Joe Budden respecting Bro, that shit. Yeah, so I get it. Why were we here? Like, why, like, he just threw out some names just to say that he That he did it. it. Yeah, like, no. He shouldn't have done that. Yeah. He, he picked, Just have your he, event. He picked the biggest names too. Like he picked like the. Like you knew he wasn't names. getting them. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're not even New York based anymore. Facts. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. What you, like, uh, like who? Um, Academics and Joe. Biden. Ack is. I think Ack might live in Jersey. I don't know. I, but, I thought he moved to Atlanta. But, 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 oh, but Joe anyway. definitely lives in Jersey. Still, you're reaching out to the biggest ones. Yeah, like, Come and, on, and it goes back to what I said. They, they, they look for the biggest mm-hmm. name. It's like no, there's plenty of. People beneath them, not to say they're not not as talented as Joe and Act, but that you could access. Like we got three right here. We got need to know. We got a bunch I don't of got different ten k followers. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, and that that's really the unfortunate thing is these panels look for the visibility over the actual conversation. You know? Every panel I've been on been a movie. Mm, well, that's I it. ain't gonna lie. Little girls be coming up to me like. I, I want to connect with you so you can mentor me because I felt everything you was saying. And I'd be like, don't worry, boo. I got you. No, I, I definitely felt like, I definitely felt like a superstar after that BBC when I was like, <laughs> niggas was coming to me asking for my, like, it was crazy. Can I take a pic with you? Like, can me? Yeah. Like, can you sign this? I'm like, bro, what? Sign. It's, it's, a, it's, it's always really cool, especially when it goes beyond Instagram. Like, I had someone who came to the Samsung talk I did with Duran Bernard, they tagged me on LinkedIn. They were like, yo, I I had such a good week. I went here and here, and then I saw Duran Bernard perform, and he got interviewed by Armand Sadler. I was like, oh, shit, you found me on LinkedIn, tagged me, posted. Oh, shit, look at that. Your interviews are really good. You You know when the demure trend started? I thought about you. Why? Because you use, your vocabulary is (laughs) very extensive. extensive. (laughs) And I feel like you could kick off a couple trends and teach these motherfuckers shit. Because I Googled a couple words you said here. Okay, okay. Yeah. 
I had to. I couldn't ask him, you know? Okay. Uh-uh, fuck that. Okay. <laughs> you want to know what's so funny about the, the very demure, very mindful, very cutesy shit is I saw everyone using it, and I just assumed it was something from TikTok without having seen the of actual course. TikTok. So then I Googled it, and I realized it was from TikTok. So I'm like, all right, I'm aware of TikTok enough to know when a trend comes from it, but I'm still not tapped into where I've actually seen the actual clip. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of beating the wash allegations, but not really. Even I when you understand. see it, you're still going to be confused. And I think, well, I don't know. I was big. I loved English class, mm-hmm. you know, with writers. So, like, new vocabulary words are, like, regular. Exciting, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's exciting. I'm just mm-hmm. like, okay, cool. But, like, the way people are just overusing it, I'm it's, like, It's oh, a lot. It's been a while. Like, a lot mm-hmm. of people haven't learned anything new. words. New. <laughs> or not even just words, anything. anything. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people haven't learned anything new yeah. since they stopped high school and high school was how long ago yeah so i'm just on some like hmm armand should kick this shit off hmm. and we should have some vocabulary words for these motherfuckers Word of the because day. you could do that okay i'm just saying i like it i like it like i said you you, you you about to be my like content consultant don't worry karen i'm gonna call you stay busy stay busy <laughs> stay busy word of the day need that yeah need that. i ain't need gonna that. lie let's do it. teach them i got the ring light i like i, I got I can do it. Listen, I can do let's it. Let's do it. I can do it. <laughs> I got the ring light. Uh, <laughs> Hell no. Let's get through this Hell chat. No. Very, very active chat today. Um, Vibes Cartel. Mm-hmm. We didn't really, we didn't, we didn't get to talk about the fact that he was freed from prison. I think that might have been an off week for yes. us when he got freed. But Vibes is out um, after being what he was convicted in what twenty eleven. Yes. And he went, he went to prison in twenty fourteen. He's out now. Uh, there was a juror who was being bribed. Uh, from my research, because I had to cover this, obviously. Um, so vibes is out. Because um, I was like, wait, Armand, how you know all this? Yeah, I was, like, <laughs> you know, I was tapped in. You know? Period. <laughs> Hip hop reporter. Uh huh. <laughs> Don't forget it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so he's out. He he's he uh, uh, caught Graves' disease while he was in jail. Uh, that causes like skin discoloration and bulging of the eyes. Oh, and his so, skin was already discolored. Before. Yeah. So now that he's out, he's prioritizing his health. Um, big time but yeah there's a lot of excitement in like the dance hall community the, the music world at large like people who I didn't even know were like that into dance halls like yo for, for, for the, the, the world boss <laughs> <laughs> no for real I'm sure I fucked that up it's kind of crazy so bad yeah. it's kind of crazy how many people are actually like on that like, no real, like, seriously like, yeah. people you didn't even expect like the most quiet person like talking about the world boss yeah I'm like, I'm like no. what, what do you that? know about, about Vibes that? Cartel he said blah 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 I said yo <laughs> these niggas know uh, Fever X so exo no, my love is there <laughs> like that's the only song they probably know but hey that's, that's a banger though my phone was ringing off crazy that day yeah I, I, I saw your tweets my phone was <laughs> ringing off crazy like that's my uncle or some shit but <laughs> no in high school I went through like a like I was a crazed fan mm-hmm. in high school it was sick like when some He's... of my friends be liking my comments under his post like now and I be like <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Don't like the comment. <laughs> he's and I really, he's really one of those artists though. Like he's that special. Like he yeah. put out that much music. Yeah. That it's like it's just like he is like I don't know how to yes. explain. It's like iconic. He's on some R. Kelly shit. I know yes. R. Kelly's disgraced, but like mm. he iconic. remixes his own remixes. Like yeah. there was a time when I was in high school, Cartel was hopping on a rhythm and putting out four songs on one rhythm and they all slapped. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I was so impressed that summertime was the number six trending audio on reels Mm -hmm. like that song came out mad long ago and he also dropped that while he was incarcerated so he dropped a lot of big hits while he was in jail um i already booked my flight to to jamaica for new year's eve yes Yes. perfect transition he will be performing a new year's eve concert in jamaica this year yes december 31st 2024 be be careful um i'm good niggas on my body (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you gonna uh, see her on stage with a machete no I'm gonna cry honestly I'm not even gonna be able I'm gonna be too emotional like yeah we're, we're definitely gonna need you like doing like some like a woman on the street type content I'm like, gonna cry y'all I can't like it's <laughs> it's like he had got life in jail mm-hmm. this is like if Max B came home uh-huh. yeah. but not on like the like the musical level mm-hmm. but it's like we never I thought Vibes was gonna die in jail mm-hmm. Like, I thought he was going to die in jail, and the day he was released, I was shocked. Yeah. Like, what? And yeah. then I went, like, on my Facebook and my Twitter, and I'm just like, yo, I've been saying free this man since I was a teenager? Mm-hmm. That's sick. Yeah. But I'm happy he's home. What did he go to jail for again? 
Uh, alleged was, murder. Alleged murder. They um, never found the body. Okay. Yeah, because because the entire house burned down. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> oh, again. <okay. laughs> wow. They never found the body. Oh, mm-hmm. I heard. Okay. I heard. Yeah. I heard the house burned down, too. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's something that, so. that's, They never I, found I, it. I don't know who burned the house. I'm just saying that the, the house that, that, the, that the nigga was allegedly killed in was I mean, burned that's down. I, yo, that's what I heard. I don't yeah. Did you see the tweet that said, yo, Cartel is the Jamaican homelander. Y'all will defend anything that he does. Gangsta. Gangsta. And I was like, Gangsta. stop. That reminded me, like, when I first went to Jamaica, my first, like, gangcation when I was 16 years old with my best friend. I went, and I'm telling the taxi driver how much I love Cartel. And he's like, am I murderer? Am I murderer? And I'm just there like, oh. but I love him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited. Y'all gonna see the man, the Stay Busy Live in Yard for New Year's. Can't wait. Go, go on Pun Road. Yeah. <laughs> pun Road. We, we dead Pun Road. We going <laughs> global, <laughs> niggas. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, next up, speaking of global, uh, Travis Scott will be re-releasing his uh, seminal mixtape, we could say. Maybe. People might say it's Al Faro. I'd say it's Days Before Rodeo. Uh, but his seminal mixtape, Days Before Rodeo, uh, later this month, for his 10-year anniversary. A very exciting time for for people, uh, big Travis Scott fans. I'd say that was, yeah, I, that that was around when I got hip to him. Oh, drugs, same. drugs. you should try it, yes. Skyfall, Bro, there's Sloppy people, Toppy. There's people going to hear Mama Cita for the first time. That's Literally. This, 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 like, this, like, they're going to hear, like, <laughs> yeah. when Thug comes on and, like, Rich Homie. Oh, my, oh, my God. Bro. Yeah. Oh my God. That's, like, low-key making me, like. I was bumping Rodeo. Like all weekend as a precursor, and I'm just like, nah. I really used to be upset. One of the best dates that I've ever been taken to mm-hmm. was a Travis Scott concert wow. at Gramercy Theater. That's fire. This is when he was still with yeah. Rihanna. Mm. That's fire. And I got invited to a date. Like to this day, it's the best date hands down. That's hard. That's, That's why good, yeah, it was a good ass show because the venue was still like it's yeah. still like one of those like like the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like he could never do that shit now. Nigga. Yeah. He oh, could never over. do that no, shit burn, now. Burn Gramercy down if you try to do that. Yeah. Shit. He's yeah. not even gonna get to perform. Yeah, like that'd be yeah. a that'd be a uh, noise, code of conduct, safety yeah. violation, all that shit. It's yeah. all right. That's, That's a good over. concert. But yeah, super exciting. I mean, you know, moments like these where old projects we love and might have on our iTunes or something come to streaming and it's just easier to listen to. And there's always those people who are like Oh, like you niggas ain't have this already? Shut up! <laughs> this is not right for now, you. If, bro, like, didn't. like I'm, if I'm those if you people. have it already, good for you. This is not for <laughs> you. Just for people who don't want to dig in the crates, go listen on SoundCloud and shit. Like, like, yeah. like the 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 convenience of this being in the same place where I listen to everything else is great. So that's exciting. Also, there's he's doing a vinyl and he's doing mm. uh, merch and stuff. Mm. And if you buy it through his website, there are some bonus tracks from the days before Rodeo. Wow. At, at, uh, like that time period where Damn, you put the project out, some stuff that people I haven't can. heard. You, yeah. you, you know, Travis. Travis is going to go, 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 do a merch. Might be. Crazy. <laughs> I was gonna say you're gonna have some sneakers. Travis always going to do a bundle. Crazy. Oh yeah, absolutely. The Travis might be all, crazy. always going to do a bundle. So when did our generation give in to streaming? Because like you just now said, like oh, the pleasure of having everything in one place. Like we really were. I gave in immediately. Like you gave it, in it, immediately? Was, it was dope, yo. When when Apple Music first popped off in like 2015, and I was like, wait, like I. I don't gotta like download this. I could just search yeah, this shit. It. You get and, it immediately. And, too? Well, because, and because, because just student discounts. Yeah, so I was, I was paying five thing. a month that's for another it. Thing. We was getting like, okay, you were probably getting student discounts. I was yes. working with music stuff. So yeah. it's like you were getting, I got like free, first free um, three months of uh, Spotify premium. Mm-hmm. And then it like glitched and let me keep it. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah, like, bro. So it I was. I forgot about the student discount. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. $5 a month first. wasn't yeah. nothing. Mm hmm. There's a lot of stuff happening at first that like allow people just to have it and like people realize how dope it was. Like, oh, streaming's like streaming. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I, I gave it a me but but I do st- I do still have my iTunes library that mm-hmm. has like like Drake comeback season, mm-hmm. Drake mm-hmm. Room for Improvement, mm-hmm. uh J. Cole Friday Night Lights, Ooh. like stuff like that, yeah. that that isn't on streaming that that I just need that. Frank Ocean's um what's the joint? Uh cha- no, it's not channel one. what is the it? The one before the n- n- nostalgia ultra? Uh, yes, Nostalgia Ultra, With like thank you. Yeah, songs. yeah. I'm like, bro, <laughs> yeah. every time I get in that mood where I want to play Nostalgia Ultra, it, it's just such a ah, great time. You know what's great crazy time. with me? Me and my family, we are connected on the cloud still. Mm. So, like, and like when, when I remember when iTunes first, like when iTunes and iPods first happened, like my dad took every CD and like everything physically and burned it to the computer and mm. like 
burned it to our iTunes, a cloud and stuff. So I have so many like songs and CDs and stuff that's never been on stream or has never been on anything. So like I, I, I love that. And I also love the streaming yeah. because there's so much stuff like you just named, like there's so many mixtapes that people like, they just, they, they'll never all get the yeah. like, All the Wayne shit. Like all the Wayne shit. Like even like Fab. that. Even that early like J. Cole and like Jay Z mixtapes that people used to make. Mm-hmm. Like with like just crazy Because like, like that you, Piff is, is down too, mm-hmm. right? Like yeah, it's not. Yeah. So gone. that that was one of the only places people that missing out on had so them much, readily bro. available. Like there's a Dat Piff app. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's easy. Mm-hmm. Or SoundCloud. You can find it mm-hmm. on SoundCloud and stuff like that. Yeah. So. We're losing all of these Live resources yeah, that like, had them, and so now, now you, you really got to dig around and try to find them on the internet. That's such so stress. you know, it's always cool when something comes to streaming. There's always the concern about will all the samples get cleared, will they will yeah. beats change, stuff like that. But I feel like the fact that it took this much time, Travis probably got, got everything. Yeah, cleared. Every, I mean, yeah, bro. That's, so, that's what we usually. That's really be taken. Like, why well, be taken? Yeah. Like, just to go back and properly do things because it's like, bro, everybody's making money now, mm-hmm. so it's like. Yeah, you just can't put things up. Like, yeah. unfortunately, I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, that that should be cool, man. I mean, I, 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 I listen to these every so often, anyways. But I, I'm definitely like the day it hits streaming, I'm, I'm, I'm probably I'm, gonna tap into. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna play it like I've never heard it before. Honestly, just, <laughs> <laughs> it's a sloppy toppy going gonna take you to heaven. That's a double Sky entendre. Yeah. <laughs> you went crazy. You went crazy. You went crazy. You went crazy. Um, lastly, absolutely. Well, lastly, for the new music chat, the long awaited, long promoted, everybody, it seemed like everybody in the music industry had a verse on this song at one point. Oh my God. Uh, Cash Cobain and Layla's Problem is finally out. Uh, what was it? Seven minutes and 39 seconds. 14 artists total on the track. Um, how did you? I mean, obviously, there's someone here who's very close to the situation, but right? um, <laughs> yeah, because I saw Will fighting for his life on the internet. Yeah, that tweet about like say sorry to Will right now. <laughs> it was say sorry. Crazy that's one of those tweets. That's one of those tweets. I got to mute it. Like I just got to mute it because like people, people, bro. When something goes viral, I feel like people like like the ability to, to read and comprehend like just goes down. Yeah, like, they yeah. just want to argue. Yeah, they just want to argue. I'm saying, bro, I said streaming era, like mm-hmm. streaming era. Like I know there was songs before. Mm-hmm. I know it was this, and I'm talking about streaming era. Like, like I said, touch it. Bust 2015, the line. Yeah. Like, like you just said, 2015. On, I was yeah. like, bro, I just listened to. Like, my, my, <laughs> you can go to my YouTube right now. You are gonna see the touch it. Video yeah. being played in my history. I yeah. fuck with that shit. I love it, but that yeah. was not streaming era. Me bro. being annoying. What do you yeah. mean, Mega? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was crazy. Nah, that saw, was crazy. I, 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 that I saw that. Crazy. I, mean, I saw that. that. I was like, mm. that was crazy. I need no. to monitor this. <laughs> you saw, <laughs> yeah. bro. I, I you're it. funny as fuck. Actually, holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. Because I like, seen that, and I I seen that. I was like, Evan, he's funny, man. I just kept scrolling. <laughs> and I went back to it again, uh-huh. and then I was like, No, I'm gonna keep. No, then I, then I finally responded. I was like, Anybody over? Like, what I say? Anybody over? Like seven or yeah, five? Yeah, you know, like seven or like, five people. Yeah, like born after two thousand or something like that. Two thousand three. Yeah. I think you said. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something with the years. But it was just. It was. I don't know, bro. Yeah. That's not your problem. It's not my. That's (laughs) that's a good. That's a good one. Not your problem. problem. Um, but yeah, I I think the only song that I can think of recently that had mad features, and I understand why people would wouldn't remember it. Uh, Big Sean on Detroit Two had something called like Friday Night Cipher. No, I remember that. Sada Baby was on there. A bunch, a bunch of Detroit. All Detroit people. Yeah. Yeah, and it was like okay, that was cool. No one really cared ultimately because. Big Sean album in pandemic, but that that's the only example of a posse cut that I can remember. And I think doing it in this sexy drill setting, where songs are typically shorter, is oh shit! Like like these niggas, a lot of the verses that got promoted ended up making it. Like yeah. I, I was happy to see Black's verse on there. I thought Flo Millie was good. I thought Cali was good. Uh, Cash and Chow were probably my favorite verses. And then you know some other niggas who was there. I was like, I don't, I don't really need this. I was shocked that Fab hopped on it. I was like, okay, he that, he that was he dope. To be I know that. he did. That, that was dope. That was dope. Because <laughs> like, because Fab is definitely, I mean, he hasn't dropped music in quite some time. No, he he's dropping like. Oh, I I, I must. It's on YouTube. It's okay. a lot of like covers. Oh yeah, freestyles. And yeah, all that. the yeah, freestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's he's dropping. Because like, I remember the, the his uh, snooze freestyle was what went crazy yeah. like a year or two ago. Fab still. You know? Yeah, but. Fab, one thing I love about Fab is he always shows love to the young New York artists that are coming up. Like, he's worked with the A-Boogies. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so him him doing this was a good look. And and 
I appreciate that he respected the sample because it was yes. certain features on there who was rapping. You you supposed to line your yeah, bars bro. up with when Layla says that's not my problem yeah. or problem. Right. You got yeah. you got Big Sean just yeah. <laughs> like I, I I think he started out and was like working with the sample, but then he just was going all over the place. I'm like my nigga, bro. Like what's why? Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. The, per- the people that didn't play with the the people that didn't play with the sample on the reverse, like low key, just yeah, it, it blew me. It blew me. Right? Like, like did you bro. not understand the assignment? Yo, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was Anicia on? Was on there? Right? She was. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She, I thought hers was different. She she, she made it. it was hers cool. was hers was hers was dope. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna tell y'all. Choir's kept a lot of people, a lot of artists. Not a lot, but a few said no because of where their verse was placed in the order mm. some people wanted to be first mm. some people thought they shouldn't have been behind so and so so and so so a lot of ego uh, yes yeah like, and not a lot but you know some some cut it down i can get replaced. that because i i know i like I've, I've obviously listened to all of the snippets over the last few weeks and then when it was finally put together i listened to it entirely to see who made it see which verses i liked mm-hmm. now it's like once i get like three and a half four minutes in I'm, I'm, I'm kind of good. So all those people... Same, but the same, crazy thing is the same thing. Same mm-hmm. thing. But keep going. Yeah, so, so all too. those people who are after the four-minute mark, I'm, I'm not going to hear your verse again. But So, so you know, for those who are willing to listen to that song in its entirety every time they play it, then, you know, like, the, those artists who are later will be fine. But there's probably a lot of people who will probably not, you know, not be heard as much. So, yeah. Speaking of, uh, DJ, <laughs> speaking of DJs, DJs hit me. Saying, yeah, you guys should just cut it up and send it to um, send it to send it like cut up the verses and send the DJs. I said, aren't y'all DJs? Aren't y'all <laughs> like, do, do, do. like, aren't y'all posting? <laughs> so you want me to do your wow. job? You want, me, you want me to cut this up in, in record box and send it back to you in record box and and make sure it's labeled with? Oh yeah, this is the verse. Like, mm-hmm. no, nah, bro, that's what you supposed to do. That's bro. the shit I be talking about I with know. DJs. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say no, no. that. Why yeah, I would I do your it. job for you? I'm just like, bro. <laughs> there are there's there's a lot like, of it's not passion that hard, bro. lacking in yeah. all of these industries, DJs included. They're not listening to new music, organizing their crates, <laughs> fucking cutting up the songs. They're not doing certain things. I'm not. Yeah, I, I remember this was a conversation on the, the the timeline a little while ago. It's like I don't remember the last time a DJ broke a new song for me. Not like us in LA. That's the last time. Mm. Everybody now, who was outside when that song released, mm-hmm. it broke for them there. But yeah. that's why it was such a moment yeah. because it's been too long. Yeah. Like I remember when Kendrick hopped on America's um, Got a Problem with Beyonce, mm-hmm. and then he said the ghost thing, fuck it up, ghost thing. If we weren't in college, we would have heard that shit in the spot the same day. Mm-hmm. I don't did not. I've never heard a DJ play that before. Yeah, yeah. I don't even think they have subs- um, streaming subscriptions. Bruh, I, I don't know if I told y'all. When I went to Toronto, the weekend for all the dogs dropped, I, I had to tell the DJ about Rich Baby Daddy. I was shocked. I was shocked. So now you see why the girls are all in the spot like this. <laughs> like, play. I was at brunch, a bunch of baddies there. We was, we, we was risen it up. They was, I can't wait. You to was go risen back. it up? Can't go wait. You know I, mean? <laughs> I came in with the aura. But. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, my nigga's in rare form. He's in rare form. <laughs> but we're, we're at brunch. It's a and Monday. I'm like, bro, play Rich Baby Daddy. He's like, what's that? I'm like, you a Toronto DJ? You ain't hear Drake's album? No. And beyond the full album, you ain't hear Rich Baby Daddy? At least. Like, niggas ain't tell you this is the joint you're going to have to play. I played it. The women in there went crazy. I'm like, what is wrong with y'all? He said, man, move <laughs> over. Let me take like, over. Bro, no cat. <laughs> like, what's wrong with these DJs these days? Like, It's a male and female, like, child. Like, we, we used to go out to parties and shit expecting to be put on to new stuff. And now it's like, you hear what you're listening to already or or a lot of older stuff. Like, people rely on a lot of older music, which, you know, it's fine. Like, No, but it's the same older music. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. they don't even, like, switch it up. Like, a, yeah. a hit from 5, 10, 15 years ago mm-hmm. is still a hit. You yeah. don't have to play the hit that's just from 2019. Like, like show me that you can really control a crowd and, mm-hmm. like, really, like, curate a vibe. But mm-hmm. a lot of these people can't do that. So, but let me shut up because then I'm a <laughs> hater. My my uh, homegirl, she, she posted on her story maybe, like, a couple weeks ago. Um that D-Days need to stop playing Fantasia when I see you. And I'm like... Baby! I, I, I thought about it and I was like, that's such a class. I'm like, you know? Baby! Yes! The fact that that's every D-Days, like, go-to Slow last man, song man. of the party it's or corny. one of the last songs, like... It's corny. Come on, man. Like, we, we we ain't got nothing else that we can end the party with. Like, I'm, I'm sure you can find something. I don't even want to hear Can We Talk. Right. 
Bruh. Well, real talk. That that is a cheat code I hate too. That one too. Bro. That that one's getting a little annoying. Getting? You know, Maybe you I know go out funny? too much. You know what's funny <laughs> is 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 people talk so much about we should stop with swag surfing and dreams and nightmares intro, but I'm like, okay, fine. But th- th- there's other stuff too. That like, means we gotta like, stop it all. Yeah, like yeah. there's other songs yeah, that y'all are ignoring. Like, can Thanks. we talk? I'd, I'd be okay not hearing that at a party anymore. Not that I don't like the song. No, I love it. But people, love it. it's it's a, it's a go to that is it's gone disgusting. to too much. Yeah, it's low key disgusting. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. low-key disgusting. Then I hate how everybody's singing it around. I'm just like, I, I turn into like the Grinch. Like <laughs> I'm that, like, yo. Like, you... like niggas is just like, everybody's enjoying themselves. I'm just like, bro. Uh, like, and I don't y'all... drink. So I'll be there like. <laughs> Damn, you be in there. It's, it's oh, you be in there just like I'll looking get like at, one little cocktail. I know, but like you tell you, like, you look. It's crazy you going to parties. Yeah, you don't get drunk. drunk. Yeah. It's crazy not getting drunk and going to parties to see people drunk. And oh, like, it's, and like yeah. I'm the mother. Yeah, you used to be like a I'm the mother. Just, 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 and just I drive. Yeah. So oh, I'm yeah, the yeah. mother. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're the mother. You're the mom. <laughs> um, you're the mom for but sure. But to just, and I promise we will we'll have a lot more time for banter. But just to bring it back to Cash and Layla, I, oh, I yeah. saw some people with the idea. And I don't know if it's something y'all have thought about already, but I saw some fans, an actual good idea from fans, like <laughs> like to doing like different versions of it where it's like just the all girls version mm. or the, the all slizzy version mm. or the all this version. I'm like, you know, that's, that's cool. You that's know, not we, bad. We, we, I, I didn't see that, but those are good ideas. Actually. Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually, fire. Because like, you know how all these singles come out? It's like singles yeah. are like EP releases where it's normal, sped up, <laughs> uh, acapella. Mm-hmm. Clean radio mm-hmm. edit, all that. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know, mm-hmm. you, you could just build out from there. You and know, you the know what? Woman. You saying that? I, I actually like how they started to bring that back. Yeah. Um, for like singles and stuff, or like, because I mean, if you if you if you go look at vinyls, like a big a big records, you should have all that type of stuff mm-hmm. on there. Like, there's yeah. a radio edit. There was a, a acapella instrumental. Like, you know, what I'm saying like when a when a single was that big or a song was that big, it, it got pushed like that. So I'm kind of glad that kind of stuff came back. Yeah. And yeah, I would love to do that for. Yes, for especially problems. if you're like on the aux at like a kids party, mm-hmm. like it's just easier to go to the single, see there's a radio edit, play all that, right. boom. Um, boom. So you, you don't want them hearing, you know, the facts. You don't, you don't need want to them hear hearing, you know, you, you know me. I put my thumb in it on purpose. Okay. Like right. kids, kids don't need to hear that. You go know what sneak and listen to it like we used to. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh so that is our chat. Very fun. We was very, chatting. Very, very we was chatting chat. today. You just ended it with I put my thumb in it on purpose. Hey man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure, bitch. That, oh, oh. That's my song though. I, I, that's that's your heart. That's your heart. Well, that shit actually is hard. As that's fuck. your heart. I love that shit. <laughs> that shit is actually hard. Just shout out to the brown boy Nav. But anyway, <laughs> for our lunch break this week, uh, Fanatics Fest happened. Now, n- none of us were there, but we did see some pretty cool things. Nobody told me nothing. I'm sorry. Nobody told me nothing. That's just one of the things I would assume you would know about because you'd be outside and you'd be informed. And nobody told me nothing. Well, I'm sorry. Mm-mm. I'm sorry. Um, fun as fuck. But yeah, there, there, was, there was a lot of cool stuff. A lot of like legendary athletes. Um, Hove. W- Ho- Hove was there, of course. <laughs> Travis Scott popped out. Um, WWE people was there. Uh, media people was there. Uh, they recreated the 4040 Club. Nice. And I, I saw a really cool video where... Travis Scott and Huncho, uh, Quavo, Huncho. <laughs> who the fuck do I think yeah, that? Who, yeah, and who, Travis yo, Scott don't this? like him. Who is you this see? Nigga? Who is this you nigga? see? I said that because he was like, last time he was like, yo, you don't like him. I'm like, because he's just not original. And you see? Because <laughs> that's Quavo's nickname. Yeah, Why are you yeah. stealing another man's nickname? No cap. No cap no weird. No cap. But yeah. But yeah. Tra- Travis weird. Scott and, Qu- and Quavius um, <laughs> that's funny. Were, were in that's the 4040 Club and Free Ray, Free Ray was rapping. Um, like with them behind him, it was it was a really cool visual, like That's seeing. Hard. It was a little Rockefeller reunion. Yeah, 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 like seeing generations come together in that way. Uh, Hove popped out all three days, like Miss Two B said. Yeah, it looked like a really cool event. I had friends who went, and they were like, you know, as an adult, it wasn't the craziest thing. It was like a lot of panels and like activations. But as a kid, you bring your kid out there, they see Travis Scott with Rey Mysterio, or they see like Triple H and Kevin Durant, a little baby hanging together, and. Um, you know, obviously the pictures, the meet and greets with the with the different athletes and celebrities, like so that that, that was cool. But you know, seeing Mike Rubin spend all that money to make that happen, um, a lot, a lot of people were very willing participants in it. Um, and they'll be going to L.A. and Orlando at the end of the year, so it must have been a pretty pretty big success for them if they if they run it back. So yeah, that happened. Um, maybe I'll be at one. I don't know. Do we know how much tickets were to it? 
I don't know because I got credentialed, but I ended up just not. Oh, doing period. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, said, yeah. I don't know them things when I got motion. I don't pay for things. Uh, I, I mean, it looked me. It, <laughs> fanatics is. Fanatics is crazy because you know a lot of people have been mad at them for the jerseys this year, mm-hmm. and 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 baseball jerseys. A lot of people say they're cheap as fuck and yeah. they're just not nice. But Fanatics is like a cash cow. Like, they run everything. They run bro. everything. It's like a monopoly yeah. of sports. Like they yeah. have from the cars, from the jerseys to every like apparel they're making. They're doing everything at so uh, it's like, at um at our WrestleMania this year. They they did WWE World. Usually it's something called Superstore, mm-hmm. where like some other company comes in and has all the activations and merch and stuff. But like Fanatics created, and it was dope. It was like similar situation: meet and greets, panels, um, the big thing where you could do entrances. All that, but like, yeah, it was. They, they, they went all out. Do and we know how? Do we know how long fanatics have been around? Has it always been Michael Rubin's thing? I uh, he so he is the the founder. I want to say he's the founder or owner of the company. I feel like he's been around since like 2013. I'm looking up fanatics now on right because I just started seeing that shit out of nowhere. I'm yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it? it just like blew. It really, it really blew up. Fanatics bit. was founded by Michael Rubin in 2011, but I See? feel like mm. I, I only became familiar with it recently. Me like, too. The last everybody like, six, though, everybody six did, seven though. years, but yeah. Yeah, they've the, the, they've been around for um, over over thirteen years. So. The idea of it is, I get it, I get it. Like mm-hmm. I, I can see, like it's like the fanatics, like the it's like the the fandom to the highest highest degree, where they doing everything, they're doing the apparel, the jerseys, right. sports betting, sports bet, like yeah, Jesus Christ, content, like, yeah, content, yeah, like they're doing everything. So yeah, they're taking over. Taking over, but yeah. So shout out to everyone who went to Fanatic Express. Hope you had fun. Michael uh, Rubin's sick. Hove, you know, it was good to see Hove he's outside. Sick, man. Wait, what happened? He's sick. Michael Rubin's sick. Oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah, a sick. Yeah, he's absolutely. a sick motherfucker. Absolutely, bro. absolutely. He's <laughs> a sick <motherfucker>. Keep <laughs> it up, white man. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you know what Michael Rubin is real for, and I'm so proud we went this entire episode without talking about Drake. But I'm about to break that. Uh, shout out to Michael Rubin for at the all white party. He did not play not like us because he was being considerate of his friend. Hey. Shout out to you for that, Michael Rubin. And that's probably what he took him out with black people because somebody black definitely <laughs> would have played, played it that. on purpose <laughs> because he did. Like, 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 <laughs> well, no, so, no so, so he told them before the, the party, the actual all white party, he was like, don't play this song. Like he reached out to the DJ, said, don't play this song. But the night before, he put his, his phone into the aux and Spotify, one of the Spotify playlists, played it automatically. Drake wasn't at the barbecue yet. Like the night before the actual white party, so That's funny he had to fun. go turn it off real quick and be like, "All right, like we can't do this." And tomorrow, definitely not. <laughs> so, is it get it's, out your system now? But he's unbothered, according to Yachty. I mean, uh, uh, Drake didn't ask for it. Michael Rubin, we don't did know. It. Michael Rubin did it. Of Michael his own Rubin having private conversations. I believe with these that white man. He this. having conversations <laughs> with these niggas. <laughs> Fuck that. Drake sat there and pulled the shit out of a hookah and said, "But they are, they're being racist to me." <laughs> Y'all but 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 but, but <laughs> even still, even with the song not playing at the party, Kendrick dropped the video that day. So you know, niggas pulled their phones out. Like Drake probably seen it, um, you know, out the corner of his eye. Like he's sitting there sipping his little signature drink, and he said, "Oh damn, these niggas watching the video." Uh-huh. Um, that shirt is triggering for me. We'll talk about it on on Patreon. Because uh, <laughs> all, all I'm gonna say is I don't have mine anymore, and. Yeah, so oh. that sounds like a, that sounds oh. like a relationship problem. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, who took it? <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, I think like, I have another one. Uh, okay, enlarge. Cool. I'll look that. for it. All right, I'll, I have to slim up to fit. I'm about it. to say you kind of aki though, yeah, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have to make it a muscle tee. <laughs> let's get into <laughs> our ad read. Shout out to the good people at Fine Wine. Uh, have you heard about the Fine Wine Series Festival? Well, this year they're back with their biggest festival to date september 14th at city field dive into a three-hour unlimited wine tasting here at new york's best djs curating immaculate r&b vibes we'll make sure that they're approved by miss two b's as well um and did we mention the dress theme liquid fantasy i don't know what that is, means but it's provocative it gets the people going so save the date Book your flight. Step into a world where wine, music, fashion, and black excellence blend into the ultimate celebration. Get ready to make memories that will last a lifetime. Tickets are available at finewineseries.com. Pop out, get dressed up, drink some wine. Maybe you'll meet your your wife or your girlfriend for the next week. But the, the events look lit. Everyone looks very elegant. So pop out the fine wine September 14th at City Field. Home of the awful New York Mets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> y'all ready for the board meeting this week? 
We ready. More hip hop and culture and race talk. So uh, Tyler, the creator, did an interview with Maverick Carter. And it's to me, it's always fun seeing Tyler, the creator, just say anything. Like he's really, even though he's in the prime of his career right now, he's taken on this kind of veteran stance in music where he's speaking on the generations before him and also the generations coming up. He's, he's kind of like middle child, which Cole made himself in 2019. Now people get very frustrated at things that Tyler often says about music. I remember there was a clip last year where he was like, these little kids will say like Nas is in their top five. Cause they feel like it, it, it makes them fit in. And, and I was like, you know, that's facts. Like there are a lot of rappers that people feel like they have to put in their top fives to, uh, appeal to some standard or some mm-hmm. expectation. Mm-hmm. So it's like he's spitting facts, but people take it as him whining or all this, blah, blah, whatever. So in the interview with Maver- Maverick Carter, he talks about three specific, three specific things. He talks about rappers who join um, music to make money, and, and uh, he, he called what they make meme records. Um, he talked about... Um, talked about how the globalization of music which is something we've been talking about a bunch today yeah. and just over the last course of the last couple of episodes and how like lingo is becoming universal where you have niggas in LA calling each other slime he's like what the fuck like we, we don't talk like that in LA like why are you saying that and then he brought up uh, the white rapper uh, Ian who, who Yachty's worked with and he's talked about you know like someone like him who you know is clearly sounding like Gucci Mane and Future and people are just kind of accepting it publications or elevating it situations like that so a lot of very honest things that tyler called out and i think his willingness to be that honest offends people who are ultimately being called out on on uh doing what he said they're doing and so these comments you know started a crazy um kind of fire on the on the timeline but for me it was like one i'm glad he did it because because these niggas need to get called out for the bullshit and two yeah, I mean he's he's spitting. Like I've I I completely agreed with, with with what he said. So how did y'all feel? Um, you know, seeing like the clips. I, I don't know if I got a chance to watch the full interview. I I did. It was awesome. Um, but yeah, how did y'all feel about Tyler's comments? I only saw the clips on social, but mm-hmm. um, no lies detected. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of people who aren't passionate about music who are being treated as musicians, and mm-hmm. they're just treating this as a lick. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're just making meme records. We've seen Takashi do it. He's been allowed to enter the culture and do that and be vocal about doing it and mm-hmm. still succeed. Um, I, I remember that Breakfast Club interview where, where he was like, yo, I'm I'm saying nonsense and these niggas love it. Like, like, like yo, he's yo. calling y'all stupid and y'all are still <laughs> buying into this shit. That was so Trump coded right yeah. there. Like, honestly, awesome, like, Mm-hmm. Stupid niggers. Yeah. Just yeah. take this. You're gonna eat this. Yeah. Like He's so a, like ticky ticky tucky rucka dubba dooba duff. Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I like that song. Oh. <laughs> Wait, that's the one with Nikki. Mm-hmm. Maybe. And uh, Kanye. What yeah, oh, maybe. I don't know. Wait, Nikki's like, verse, she ate down on that. I ain't gonna lie. And Kanye did a little thing too. His fucking song titles are so annoying. It was like Kiki, Fifi, Tata, Baba, Ma, Mama. Yo, oh, it's use Mama. English. It's Mama, I think. But no, I like uh, Tyler. He didn't lie, you know. And I actually listened to the Ian dude so that I can mm-hmm. actually know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah. For this, um, I'm mad I gave him some plays, but like, <sighs> all right. Is he really as impactful as people are making it seem? Like, I don't know if I am out of touch because Mm -hmm. I just naturally am losing interest in the things that are, like, you know, super youth-driven. Or am I just out of touch because I'm out of touch? Because I know on the back end, end, like, these aggregated websites are being compensated to post Mm -hmm. these people. Yep. So... If they're being paid to post them, are they really everywhere or are they being paid to be everywhere? It's kind of like when Atlantic Records drops that crazy bag for a radio hit mm-hmm. and it's like, dog, the way they playing this damn song, I know there's some mm-hmm. dollars behind this yeah. shit, man. Because I don't hear nobody in real life talking about it. I don't hear nobody requesting it. I don't like we can 
feel yeah. when something is actually impactful. Hence yeah. why people think Kendrick was dragging out, not like us, by just shooting a video mm -hmm. for a commercially successful record. Yeah. It's because records do not be that successful and or impactful yeah. organically. Granted, you know, there's a rumor he was buying bots, but anyways, go ahead. It was debunked. <laughs> Allegedly. It was... <laughs> yeah. Allegedly. Listen, I'm a Drake sexual today with my damn shirt on, all right? <laughs> but no, it's just like we are not experiencing things like that anymore. That's why I even asked you what mega means. Because mm -hmm. it's like, I know what you meant, but yeah. it's like... That shit about yeah. to come and go like the Big Sean shit. Yeah, it is. Though. And I ain't gonna lie, the Slizzy sound only works for cash. Like, everybody else trying to ride the wave, but all the best records that we love are his own shit. Yeah. So it's like, he ain't create a wave for people to follow. He created a wave for himself. His wave is finally bubbling. And it's just like, I don't... <laughs> the game is just... This is not the game I wanted to enter. Mm -hmm. This is not the game that I was, like, fantasizing about when I was a little kid. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to work in music. This is not it. This is not it. And Tyler, the creator, he's calling everything out. But at the same time, you got to acknowledge he was a safe space for white people who say nigga. Mm. Mm. He is a safe space for that. And he yeah. has been for a long time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, the first, your question about Ian, I don't think he's as impactful as people say like I, I remember when he dropped his project and i saw like the whole timeline and it, it wasn't like account it was actual people talking about it but something about it just seemed like it was out of nowhere it was kind of like when full millie dropped in 2020 and everyone was on her i hadn't heard of her until the day she dropped uh ho 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 why you here or something like that For real? yeah yeah i i i, I wasn't familiar with her uh -uh. and then maybe that was my ignorance but i listened and i fucked with it but with Ian, it was like... If you was fucking a baddie that year, you would have heard it before that. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. I was a flow militant. You know, but... Ebony, uh, Ebony <laughs> we, is crazy. But, I'm just saying. She's crazy, yo. But, um, She's crazy. So with Legit. Ian, the, I, I think the other thing that turned me off was people comparing a white boy to future Gucci. I think I saw someone even say like Chief Keef or Flocka. I'm like, That's why I had to listen to it. hold on. That's why I had to listen. I didn't even press play because I was like, I, well, I, yeah, I think it's being serious. Because I was like, I, and again, like people, people have gotten on me for being a Jack Harlow fan, but it's like <laughs> the irony, right? Jack can rap. <laughs> Jack, like, yes, he he's he has influence by by Drake. He's, he takes certain influences from some people, but I don't think he's cosplaying anyone. Like, I, I think there's there's identity there. This Ian, like, the only the compliments that I would hear, it was only comparing him to other people. So it kind of it kind of threw threw me off, and so I never listened. I finally heard him for the first time this past weekend. It was a song with Lil Yachty, uh, "Hate Hate Me," I think it was. I listened to that. Bullshit. I was like, "Oh, I'm like right, this is whatever." Like, like I I wasn't like offended by it, and like like it wasn't awful. It didn't kill my ears. I'm like, I'm not gonna go to my way to play this. Like, so I'm I'm, I'm glad that I was informed. Even the way, but see, okay, 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 okay. The thing about Ian too, the way he's marketed. Like you look, you seen the cover? It's the mm. white boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, <laughs> the white preppy. boy. Yeah, the yeah. preppy white boy. Like that, they're, that, that they're meme. Play, they're playing on. They're trying to play with. They're playing with us. Too. Yeah. They're trying to play with us. Like yeah. They're trying to be like, yeah, we can throw this white boy in your face and have him have him be the the most whited out thing and still make him go. And yeah, he does sound like future. Mm -hmm. He does sound. But he like, don't. But I, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. Like, to, like we get, right. we understand that. But like them trying to throw that into our face. You know what really pissed me off? The fact Boo came back and said something to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, yeah I'm like Akon, brother. I was like, yeah. I was like, okay, boo. Yeah, you look like a fucking crazy, money hungry mm -hmm. nigga signing anything and everything, trying mm -hmm. to make it go. Like, yeah, yeah. Ian could probably go to Ohio State and sell out, sell out Ohio State right mm -hmm. now. White ass campus, this and that. But, 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 like the substance and the stuff that we hold on, the stuff that we care about. There's nothing there. Yeah, nothing. we're grasping air, my nigga. So it's it, that's that's the that's the issue and the problem with it. Yeah, you could yeah, you signed him in, yeah, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And then then he he said something stupid too, with like he said, Yeah, he does sound or he doesn't sound like none of the it's like, bro, which one is it? What are y'all what's going on? <laughs> yeah. He don't to me. And we need yeah. more yeah. It's just yeah, He I mean, sounds like I, a white boy to me. Yeah, I I haven't listened enough to give the compare the, the Yachty song I heard, I was like, I don't I don't really hear it. But that's this one song. So yeah. I'm, I'm I'm No, I'm, he sounds like that in all of them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and I and when I heard that shit, I'm like, yo, pack that Titanic up too, man. <laughs> pack pack that nigga up because nigga, you part of the problem, bro. Yeah. Like you um, know them privileged rappers Drake rapped about? Mm, that's Yachty. Mm, 
Yeah, y'all be tweaking. Mm. He's a privileged rapper. Why are you still so visible? Where are mm. your hits? Mm. Like, the fuck? That, 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 that nigga podcast, man. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he a chatty patty, man. Yeah, shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the other thing people try to counter Tyler with is they brought up how Odd Future broke out into the game. How they were doing very outlandish raps, like mm-hmm. people call them the meme records of of that era. You know, he's talking about having a threesome with a triter- triceratops and stabbing Bruno Mars and his esophagus and just all this like very obscene type shit. And I remember I I initially didn't really fuck with Odd Future just because like the songs that I heard, the stuff that I heard about them, it was like weird, like. But one thing that I like couldn't... Like it was like weird. It was weird. It was like, I never connected it was like, what with them. Was, yeah. It was like he was hearing shit like, yo, this, yo the nigga was eating cockroaches yo, and he like, hung this, himself. This shit is yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm good, my nigga. I, I'm about to watch Dragon Ball Z. It. I'm good, yeah. my boy. Like, I'm not... Like, like, it, 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 it just didn't do anything for me, but I think one thing that was undeniable in my perspective was there was, there was musical talent there. Like, they, they, they could rap. They they did a lot of different type of production and stuff like cool song concepts and stuff like that. So like that that I respected, but the content just didn't move me. And then I think it was around like Flower Boy when I really started to fuck with Tyler. I was like, yo, this is a, this is a great album. Like he's he's maturing. He's he's bringing something different. And I've I've rocked with Tyler ever since. And you know, so so I think people try to almost like devalue what he said about meme records because he was making what people would call meme records early in his career. But it's like isn't the best person to speak on something that's wrong, someone who did it and then grew out of it. Like, I, I don't know. Like for me, it, 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 it holds even more weight coming from Tyler because he did a lot of attention grabby stuff to break out. And now he's established in his career. He's a vet. He's in his prime. He's made Igor, but he also made call me when you get lost. He also made flower boy. Like he's, he's shown a true love and ability within music. So, yeah, Tyler has the right to speak on that as someone who stopped doing it and also is just one of the best artists with, within the game right now. Like, that's kind of how I view it. So um, that's just the weird thing about people. People always try to, like, call out your past and make it seem like you can't grow and you can't, like, like you can't change and you can't talk about something. I mean, but he'd have to, like, be more intentional with that evolution because, to be honest with you, I didn't know he cared about black validation until he linked up with DJ Drama. Mm. So um, for a long time, I don't think the critique is necessarily that he was making meme records. Mm. I think it's just about the fact that for like you don't have a black fan base, mm. and you weren't. He, he, he did. the The white one was stronger. Like like Flognaw was powered by by his white audience, hundred percent. And remember, he had to stop the whole show when he was gagged when he saw black people. Mm. Like he's very yeah. aware. Yeah. That a lot of, like, he does not appeal to the hood. Yeah. He knows that. And, um, you know, I do think he needs to just be a bit accountable for that because of all, like, the weirdo shit that he was doing. Yeah. It's like, we can tell you was letting them say nigga around you, bro. <laughs> yeah. We could tell. And mm. now you're here trying to act like Dr. Umar and we ain't buying what you're selling right now. Like, I just feel like the evolution should have just been a lot more intentional Versus the DJ drama link up and then being like the veteran rapper who's on interviews talking against it. Like, we, I don't know. You got to be accountable for that stuff. I, I, I understand where you're coming from. I, I think hindsight's twenty twenty. I think his, his evolution was ultimately, it, it went the way it was meant to for him. And I, I think I'm just happy that he's at the end point he, he, he is at now. Um, where I'm, I'm willing to hear him out when he says things like this. And, you know, um... But I mean, that's a good point. That's, that's, that's a really good point. I'm, I'm willing to hear him out. I'm mm-hmm. willing to hear Childish Gambino out. Like, yeah. listen, you black. We gon' you know, there's no place like home. Yeah. But them other white people. Mm-hmm. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed the interview. Again, I love I love that Tyler is vocal. Um, I love that people get so bothered by it um, because I mean, this is something we've gone on and on and on about us as a trio, us on social media, us and just our lives and our, our consumption and enjoyment of music. Like it, it's different now. Like why, why, why are niggas from Cali saying slime? Why, 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 why are random <laughs> niggas from around the country making sexy drill records? And granted, again, the, the, the Don Toliver did it. I liked it. Dr- he, Drake he did it. Pass. Drake did it. I, I liked it. But now I, I like, I feel like it's only a matter like, what. Well, 
when, when, when I saw Big Sean do a verse on that joint, I was like, all right, bro. All right. Like, we starting to lose a plot. Black Ooh. black doing it, I liked because um, uh, Rashad, shout out to Rashad, told me that, like, he's Black has told Rashad, yo, I'm, I'm an actual fan of Cash. I would like to work with Cash. Aww. And so, like, it was, it, it was a really organic type of thing mm-hmm. from the backstory that I was given. But, like, if, if you remember uh, several weeks ago when we was like, you see someone doing something and you could tell. Like, they're doing it to capitalize on a trend. Yep. Big Sean, with his rollout, is stinky right now. Nobody gives a fuck about this shit. Yeah. So this nigga jumping on the problem, uh, <laughs> the fucking slizzy we are the world, you know, to, tr- to try and get, get some motion. And it's <laughs> it's not hitting. Like, like so, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. It's like, you know, it's cool that you can be in Flatbush and kind of understand the music scene that's happening in damn near Idaho or, you know, Nevada or, or whatever. But it is weird when you see the lingo penetrating other regions and you see styles and all this stuff. And Tyler was like, yo, eventually like, we're all going to talk the same, think the same, eventually? walk the same. I mean, yeah, it's, like, it's like happening. You, yeah, no, you, you're definitely seeing it's, it now, but I feel like there's still a level, like there, there, there's just people like you who hold on to the, the purity and, I'm uh, the minority, and I'm being and called the, a hater yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah, so you know, there's the, there's people who want to maintain the the essence of their regions, but there's other people who feel like they want to fit in. Like, you, like, not to go back to this, but all these niggas around the world acting like they're for, from the West Coast would, would not like us being so popping. It's like, bro, you you live in goddamn South. Dakota, like, like, <laughs> what, like, who, who, the, yeah. your your city is not back up. It's not a must. You're not outside. <laughs> it's the niggas in California. <laughs> but but um, but even like piggybacking off of the not like us record, I was real happy like of how it was received because I'm just like, yes, bring back regional rap. Like, right. I hated over the pandemic when New Yorkers started saying no cap. Mm. And I... I didn't even notice that, bro. What? I, bro, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. I'm really the New York <laughs> police. Oh, my God. <laughs> NYPD. Like, not, not to be punny, but no cap. That, that, that shit happened out of nowhere. Like, Yo. Yeah, it, like... <laughs> It was, I'm like, it was around no, like we're 2018. dead ass. They, they don't know cap. Yeah. We're dead oh ass. My God. I mean, All right. Funny as fuck. Seriously, I was Holy just like, what are y'all shit. doing? Yeah. I knew we lost the plot when Designer came out. I'm sorry. Oh my God. Yeah. And niggas, niggas thought he was future. That that was a really nasty time when people tried to say designer was gonna get future out of there. I was like, yo, he's got who said that? A l- niggas on t- Twitter were saying when, the designer. Okay, okay, was okay. Gonna I missed that. Wait, wait, wait. I missed that when, part. When that double XL snippet dropped, when he was like, niggas was feeling it right there. Niggas started saying crazy shit like, yo, he's tapping into. He's tapping in. He's tapping into his ancestral slave slave tomb tomb home. I'm like, nigga, what? Bro, it got so crazy bro niggas start making up lies to, no. start making up lies for future saying that, it, that, saying that, saying that. <laughs> niggas really was saying that they was like yo this is some like tribal chant like he's yo like, he's like no he's like niggas like no you don't get it you don't get it whenever niggas say you don't get it niggas like no you don't get it bro they trying to justify some he said, bullshit he, so he like, don't get yo, it, bro. He's tapping back. What? He's tapping back into something, something way before you was even around, nigga. I was like, I was like hey, bro, what? what? <laughs> I'm like, like what? Oh I would. I was love... like, was this before we got on the boat, or <laughs> after we got on the boat? So we got over here and they just let us out. Like <laughs> these because... niggas lied. They no. lied because one and a half songs later, that that nigga was out of here, over, gone. gone. That shit was gone. over, gone. Gone. I do feel like the South oh just has God. too much of a heavy influence right now, and yeah. I would love to decenter it. And that's that's what happens when when you're the pop in region. Like you know, you go back to when you, and, and New York is obviously always going to be like the the centerpiece. But I feel like there were a lot of rappers in other regions who wanted that, those New York cosigns too. Mm-hmm. Like you got guys like Jeezy who worked with Jay Z a lot. And, and it was it was mutually beneficial. Like, Hove did it to benefit himself. Correct. Hove did it when he fucking did Big Pimpin' and all, all the other shits. So like, um, or someone like T.I. When, when it was like the Swagger Like Us joint, where it was like Kanye, T.I., uh, Wayne, and them. Like, they all mutually benefited. It was Midwest, New York, South. So mm-hmm. I think that's just, that's just the nature of being the hottest region is now. 
yeah, a lot of niggas want to run to Atlanta when they need a check balance or whatever. <laughs> like, a lot of niggas need that. Like, they're going to call Lil Baby. They're going to call Gunner. They're going to call, um, you know, Future and all them niggas. Like, that's just that's just what it is. But, but, but you're right. You're right. Because it makes... We lose the the individuality of the regions. And I, you know, I could just be biased, but I don't feel like it was as impactful as when New York influenced not- the entire game. Like, we've, we've never complained so much. So I think we need to return back to the status quo <laughs> and just, you know? I, it's, it's just different times. I, I think, I think, the the accessibility of the Atlanta Southern Sound makes it so like you you're aware of more people who are doing it and like your standards for it because you know the elite levels that it has reached are high and a lot of people just don't don't meet that standard they don't and there yeah. were a lot of southern rappers who strive to prove like listen i'm not just mm-hmm. a regular southern rapper like i'm a lyricist yeah. like the jeezy ross Luda's. tip yeah, yeah like we don't really have that like if this was the early 2000s sexy red would have been another kia mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the fact that she is still like you know being we're being told that she is you know doing things <laughs> I, I don't i don't feel it or see it but we're being told and um i'm just like Yo, I don't, like, I don't know. I said it before. Like, yeah, the South has been running shit for a minute as of lately. But every single cultural shift has come from my city. I've been saying, I've been saying New York's been the hottest since Pop Pop Smoke, so. But even before that, like, Cardi, any any cultural shift that has happened recently, Ice Spice, Cash Cobain, like, any cultural shift that moved the needle for real, for real, drill, it comes from New York, so let's just. Well, what? Uh, Chief Keef. Chief Keef was like first really kind of initiated the the drill sound. Well, well I'm talking New York drill specifically. Okay, she's because it didn't it go different. it didn't go global until we touched about, it. Yeah, she's talking about like the resurgence. Valid, and valid, like the, yeah. it, it didn't go like global the, till we touched that's it. That's when like Axel popped up. Okay, that's right. so all I'm valid, saying. Valid, valid. You're right. You're right. You're right. They, once the UK and the Midwest linked up with New York. How about like trap, like the the like southern trap sound? We I mean, tired of that shit. That's what's going on right now. No, but I'm saying like, did, did would you credit that to someone with within New York too? As like no, adult? I'm saying that like we need Cause, to cause, stop cause with that. That moved the needle for a while. The the, the, the southern trap sound within, within future is still underrated. Like a lot of people would still question futures. Legacy and yeah. his yeah, influence people don't because, look at him as a lyricist, and, and it's he's because one of the he's best. the king of trap. All right. So if the genre is still, you know, still generally considered or like still disrespected or considered a subgenre, like is it really moving the needle? Like I mean, we it's, love it's, it's it's a lot of people who try who try to make that sound after like Future popped off, like Drake did it on If You're Reading This Is Too Late. Um a lot of, a lot a lot of people came after them and tried to try to make that sound. And like I, and little, little baby like went his for his two years where he was I I, I know, I know. But 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 hey Hey, my my, my my turn sold 196k. <laughs> they bought it. Uh, the, the nigga they was Grammy streams. nominated. All that, like <laughs> his his sound, which was very influenced by that southern trap, did Snoop move the Dogg needle. Don't got a Grammy at one point. Yes, very very fucked up. I agree. But in terms of this era, in terms of the, the acclaim and the sales, like he he, he had it. So like. That, that that's a needle mover for that period I feel of time. like it moved the needle for them as individuals but not the culture and that gives me back to the point that I made like anytime it's like a big grand global thing it's from New York and I could just be a New York ass bitch saying this shit who knows I love my city New York stand the fuck up <laughs> I, 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 I do agree but, but I think there were some specific movements that some other of places course. I, have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I for think sure. honestly, bro, I think I think we're starting to move uh away from like regional stuff. Honestly, Absolutely. Yeah. I think I think I think it's starting to become like I do agree with the with the New York stuff. I mean, I've been saying that I always get in trouble yeah. for saying like New York <laughs> is the hottest anyways. Yeah. Because in in my mind, hottest all hottest to me sometimes means or not sometimes it does to me like the most innovative new trend type yeah. of thing. Like, of course, like and hottest in people's mind means the best and yeah. like oh it's not true hottest yeah. is the most visible the most, most talked yeah, about yeah the most like yeah like to yeah. me like New York has been that um you know seeing up close with like pop and then seeing up close with ice and seeing up close with cash and stuff like that like yeah this stuff is 
this stuff is 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 cutting edge culture wise. Like it's next level. Like mm-hmm. I've seen it. Um, so yeah, I think the music is kind of leave, leaving the reach and stuff. But like cutting edge and like culture driven next level stuff that's like breaking and like it's New York, bro. Like mm-hmm. the stuff that's happening up here is, is 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 next level. And a lot of these southern niggas is coming up here to hang around to do whatever the fuck to be around any of this was what's going on. Um. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the West Coast for having their moment with Kendrick because for right it was looking it was looking dim for them niggas for a long time. Is, is for the, real, it, for it, real. Yeah, for looking dim, my nigga. <laughs> for like, real, for real. I'm glad they had a moment because it, was, it was. I think I think we've also seen though, and I'm probably gonna come off as as a hater or whatever, but <laughs> it was it was branded as the West Coast having a moment, but then you see like who just dropped recently? Blast just dropped. No motion. No motion. Must no. just dropped. He dropped. No motion. YG's just dropped. Yeah. No motion. Like, mm. the, the the whole West Coast kind of came together to celebrate Not Like Us, but the only real needle mover over there, as we see, is Kendrick. Now, 2014, I'll never take Mustard's prime away. Mustard was producing all the heat back. I was dancing to all that shit. Loyal. In college. Like, he, uh, all, all, all them Kid Ink songs. Yeah. Like, Ty Dolla songs. <laughs> Ty Do- mm-hmm. Mustard was him. Fat, mus- Fat Mustard was a problem. Fat Mustard was yeah. a dog. Uh-oh. Fat yeah. Monster was a dog. Fat game, my boy. Yeah, yeah that, I'm just kidding. That, 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 that <laughs> nigga lost all his Dijon. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. my god! <laughs> but that, that yeah, like you know, so even with that, um, I think a lot of people are calling it the West Coast moments. A lot of people are celebrating it as if they were on Not Like Us, but it's really Kendrick who who did that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So that's it's, it's just funny to see that kind of play out because. Them niggas was all talking shit. Schoolboy Q on Twitter every other day saying some shit. We 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 don't even they ain't even report your first week sales, brother. Bro. Like we, we don't even know what Bro. you did. West Coast niggas was talking so heavy yeah. and like you kind of just had to let them do it. But like, mm-hmm. bro, they haven't had bro them bro. The West Coast is so far. They they, they, they were starving. They've and been. They, like, they were starving. They're famished. Yeah. They're famished. Like for goodness sakes, like you said, YG dropped. Like nobody cares why YG dropped. Why yeah. just why just why you just have to do a blood and crip walk, nigga, mm, yeah, together, it's, it's, holding it's, hands with niggas, walk. doing a peace walk, <laughs> because the album and like this is shit like yeah. that's, that's the type of shit they gotta do on the West Coast to make noise, bro. Like yeah. they gotta do peace walks and shit like that. Yeah. Shit. It's, like, <laughs> it's, 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 like, it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> it's like come on, who's bro. who's Yo. like when Kendrick says it's all said and done mm-hmm. for him, it's going to be very interesting to oh see God. who the next up in the West Coast is. Like, they they got very fortunate that, like, one by one, like, they had Snoop, they had Pac, they had uh, Dr. Dre, they had Game, and then they got Kendrick, and Kendrick's been holding it well, down. Well, damn, from, like, 03 to <laughs> He's like, there's a huge gap there. Bro, thank, thank Game, God Game they popped got off, Kendrick. what, like, 04? Oh, oh, thank God they oh, got Kendrick. Oh, yeah, I oh, yeah, but like Snoop was still dropping like yeah, early two thousands. But yeah, drawing from Snoop to Game, and then Kendrick took it and he's held Man, it down for who's the last be next? fifteen. Who is gonna be next? Because it's not uh, Kalen for real, for real. It's yeah. it's not. For real, and, for real, and, it's and, not. And, and, and and I do like some of his stuff, but I'll yeah, it's not gonna be him. It's not, it's, not. it's not gonna be Roddy. It's 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 over. Yo, that um, makes me sad for Roddy. It was supposed to be yeah, he him. Was chosen. It, was, it absolutely was. It absolutely his first was. album was actually like it was supposed to be him. It's not too late. It He is. But it's, it's we, we don't have to stay too long on this because we've talked it's about low, it's a, a low, good it's, amount. It's low. He he's been trying to re- regain that steam. He has, he has. He's been trying to make people care. Yeah. Niggas do not care about his music. No, because even he, that nine one one song. No yeah, one like like solid hook, like something that should catch up, ca- catch on, and it just hasn't. Like yeah. I, I don't even hear Roddy out. Like if I do, I, I hear like balling. Yeah. Or like the old shit. Like I don't even think niggas play the box no more. They don't. <laughs> no cap. They don't. Um, no, no cat. I mean, Where you from? I'm from Jersey. Oh, I. I mean, <laughs> we do. Do we have our? Well, own I'm gonna say what y'all say. I, we, we honestly, a lot of our lingo we is get, New York we lingo. Get from New York. NY slash NJ yeah, yeah, in we, the bio. I've yeah. The, the the only time New York was in my bio was when I lived in Port Chester with my ex. That's the only time. <laughs> New York was in my bio. I'm I'm not one of them niggas. I I used to call Jersey niggas out for putting New York. I was like, bro, I know your address. You don't live in New York. Stop capping. Stop capping. Like, like who, who are you lying to? Who are you impressing? The bitches. 
I can't Listen. lie to you, bro. When I first moved from Ohio, you changed that shit immediately. <laughs> my nigga, you know what it felt like? It felt like I put on like the. I feel like I put on like my like the vacation the, badge. I put on like like yeah, like the Iron Man suit or something <laughs> like that. When I, when I finally changed New York, New York. Yeah, yeah, no, Ooh, it's, nigga, know, it's, that it's, shit is heavy, boy. This the, niggas click on your niggas click on your bio and see New York, New York. The niggas know you getting to it, boy. This is this this, this <laughs> it's, it's a great place to to be from. It's a great place to be in. This this is you get still to something. This is still like it's if you're enough. promoting something, you gotta do an event in New York. You gotta come to New York. This is yeah. the this is the the home, the hub for so much. This is where national TV shows, studios are based. Like you gotta come here to do fucking Saturday Night Live you or whatever the other crazy, shit is. Bro, you know what I've been realizing? Not realizing. I always knew this, but every new movie that drops we always like to test out for like the promotion shit like mm-hmm. I don't know if y'all saw the alien people who had like the alien things mm-hmm. on their yeah. faces and they had the monkeys on uh, they had the monkeys on the horses yeah. now they doing some other shit with the with the crow like bro we I love are, that I yeah. love it too it's actually kind of it's like fun yeah. it's like living in like a a movie, I guess. I don't know. It's like nuts, bro. But I don't the, know. there's always a, a New York screening. There's mm-hmm. there's always a. No, there's a not New red York carpets though. Party. They've been skimp with the New York red carpets. That's whack. But yeah, you know you gotta why, come why here. Why is that? I don't know. It must be something going on behind the scenes that we don't know about mm. because it like it used to be a lot of like um, red carpet premieres and then there just aren't anymore. Mm. Like yeah. it's weird. Well, but uh. <laughs> This is this was like a, a very a very enjoyable conversation, and I feel like even our tangents, while entertaining, were also <laughs> very productive too. Yes, like yeah. ev- ev- everything was really connected because music is so much more than just what we listen to, but it's really a culture, it's a uh, it's a language, it's a way of life, and all these different factors play into it. And yeah, I mean, I think if I told nine year old Armand what the music scene would be like for me at 29 you'd be like what the fuck like what's what's apple music what is what, what, what's an ian what's like what what what's a stream what what's an album equivalent unit because i didn't even care about sales back at in the all. day like what the fuck was that but yeah shit's changed a lot and, and i do think that it's cool that we are more informed on things but it also fucks up conversation like people are too reliant on all this other stuff when it's like yo ultimately like Music for me, pr- the primary thing will always be the feeling that that, that I get, yeah. like the the emotion that that I get, the connection that it creates between me and a nigga who I don't know. When you just look at a nigga, you know, yo, this song is fire, bro. Like, we just rocking out. But yeah, it's an inter- it's interesting times. It's very interesting times. Shit feels too like scientific. And when did you guys? When did you guys think people started? When did people start caring about sales? Like, two two thousand sixteen. Absolutely. Is that, 2016. Is that when they is that when they announced them like publicly type thing? That's when all, all these pages on social Thank media you. popped up. I told people I told putting people those numbers in our faces. I, 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 I remember. I remember it too. Yeah, like saying. Drake's views was number one for like 13 weeks, and it was like th- there were certain pages that would update you every week. Like, yo, wow. he did it again. He's still number one. Oh, this album is wow. challenging. And then like when he lost the top spot, they made a big deal out of it. And like, when all did that, Charger so. to stop? Or start chart artist started. I don't know when that page started. Say. Let me look it up. Oh, that's a sixteen, bro. But that's been that that's been people's go to now. Like we quote them in news articles at work. Everybody, I mean, bro, they joined June two thousand sixteen. They're one of the bro. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, there's there's, there's 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 a few shifts that like happen throughout music. Like people remember when streamings happened. Yeah. I remember when numbers started being like i remember i remember like you know what i'm saying that's why i asked i remember yeah. 2016 being that year of like oh damn like we actually care mm-hmm. who's one yeah. who's two who's three and then i still don't i, I mean yeah i yeah. still don't and th- but then fans and stands started to care about it yeah. crazy and that's they've, when i was like they have Wait, truly this is like, started to weaponize this is next sales level. like yeah like, and like and and billboard like sneakily changed it up like because you notice a lot of people were doing really low mm-hmm. numbers. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. lower than they... So some were always low, but some are doing lower than they were in the past. Like, the way radio impacts um, charting has changed. I don't, I don't remember the exact language of it, but, but someone shared it recently. And also back maybe a couple of years ago, um, your first week sales were impacted by your singles. Mm-hmm. So, like, Cardi went gold the day Invasion of Privacy came out because mm-hmm. Bodak Yellow... Mm-hmm. Drip, mm-hmm. uh, be careful, and um, uh, Bardier Cardi with twenty one. Like 
those were cooking, had so many streams for so long that she went gold the day her album dropped. Mm-hmm. Now those those streams pre-release don't count anymore. Yeah. So that changes things for um for like uh statistics yeah, and all that yeah. too. So it's just a really different landscape. And you see fans weaponizing first week sales. You see fans weaponizing tour stats against niggas. Like, yo, like you saw how much this person made oh, compared yeah. to this person. There's like, like accounts called torting data now. Yeah, like, it's yeah, weird. It's like, Clocking like every how much dollar people are making like in like what they're saying like yeah, yeah everything's being clocked now it's kind of nuts bro. and uh, it's one thing if the artists boast their numbers against right. someone else like when like Fifty would do it or when Hove would do it or whoever it's cool like when Nicki does it, it's, mm-hmm. it's a big flex because mm-hmm. niggas not comparing to her mm-hmm. like when, oh, when Nicki does it because Billboard changes their rules anytime she breaks a. Uh, Another milestone. This is also saying. true. And like when when Chris Brown does it so he can show niggas, hey, despite me being canceled, I'm still out here, yeah. you know. I still, I'm, I still, I'm, still, I'm still selling. I still sell hard I'm, ass I'm still tickets. a touring act yeah. who niggas want to come see. Mm-hmm. People um, spend their hard earned money. So, see. you know, it's it's one thing when when the the artists, you know, use it as a flex. But fans doing it, it's just people don't talk about music anymore. They don't. That was that was another thing um Tyler talked about in the interview. I'm I'm glad. Uh, I was going on that tangent. Led me here. He he was talking about how people are so um like their first thought is is or first reaction is so negative that they've turned the word mid into meaning bad when mid is short for middle, average. So if you call something mid, it's like a five or a six. Like average and bad are not the same thing. But people are so quick to try and trash albums that it comes out ten minutes in. Oh, this shit mid. That, that's not actually a bad thing. Like, like if if you think about it, but, but back when I was more of a smoker, like, of course, I, I didn't prefer mid, but, I, I, but I'd but i smoke some mid if it was all that was available. And if I was broke? Right. I'm not smoking bad Easter. weed. I'm not smoking bad weed. Mm-hmm. I'll smoke some mid. Mm-hmm. Some some music might be mid. You might be out. You hear it's like, oh, this is not fire. It's mid. I'm, I'm, I'm rocking to it. Okay, it's cool. But people are just so quick and these words get trendy, these buzzwords back when everyone was calling albums cohesive. Like, <laughs> when that was a thing on social media, it was like, <laughs> yo, bro, did, did this album not as cohesive as this? Nigga, you just learned that word from Joe yo, Budden, bro. Get the fuck out of here. Cohesive. Demure. demure. Like, bro, you can go on all these buzzwords start to pop off and you see niggas using them who 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 got had to read using their finger in school like bro you 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 don't know what that means he's 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 he's, 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 you don't know what that means right that shit is so annoying though because Because why i'm gonna tell some bitch that why i'm writing that one down yo you use your finger to read it was it was niggas who didn't who didn't raise their hand during popcorn reading oh my god talking about talking about cohesive it just is what it is talking about cohesive so so you out here trying to critique an album, Yo. and but 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 bro, bro, really like talk to someone about music. Ask them, yo, did you like this? They'll say, I didn't like it. See if they actually say anything about music. Like, talk about lyrics, talk about vocal delivery, talk about the mix, talk about production. Niggas don't. They don't. They, don't. they just say, mm, it it wasn't for me, mm. or like, oh, I I I didn't feel it, or oh, this like like no one actually critiques. This music. The music. Yeah. The way people the way people try to get on Lotto for selling 29 K, which is not bad, bro. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I, I I just I just I'm just like done having those conversations with people, mm-hmm. bro. Like I can't I can't I can't because also like it's a weird thing like where like dudes like to just like always compare compare like these new women artists that are really just starting their career out to like men like Drake and like Steps like oh they're never gonna sell these records or never sell these much or this and I'm just like why, just, why, I, why would you even put just, that standard I, I just on hate, them I just hate that I just, that's how I feel about I can't them, even that, comparing bro. them to Nicki yeah. Yeah. yeah I hate compare I hate them that. to each other mm. exactly <laughs> like yeah like bro like they're new and this is a new age bro this is not I yeah. seen somebody say oh in 2000 in 2002 or whatever she would have sold 29k she would have been dropped and someone it's said it's true though I yeah know. that was a Jermaine Dupree said that yeah yeah, yeah. So he, he said it at United Masters Select Con by the way shameless <laughs> like yo, then someone said, but in 1960 niggas couldn't vote, so like, <laughs> so like, so like now, so like now what? Like so, it's like it, times has changed, bro. Like it's just, it's just like this, oh, is, yo. this is where we're at now. Like, and women didn't even have suffrage, so exactly. ain't no female rap. <laughs> yeah, so I just, I, you know, I take those kind of comments. You gotta take it with a grain of salt, like bro. Like it's just a new age, bro. We're in a new age. Yeah, I mean, yeah. A, a lot of niggas don't you sell scale well. It back. You like scale it. really, if you think about it, the people who are selling well still are people. 
like established acts who've been around for like that, like, long. If we gonna yeah. talk about it, none of y'all niggas ain't selling like, shit. Real talk. Like, <laughs> like, like, real talk. Bro. That like that was why when I'm sorry to bring him up again, Mr. B's, but but when Lil Baby did 196k for my turn in the pandemic, I was like, that was a genuine shock. I was like, this is a new artist. He's never sold like this before. Like, I mean, that's, that's yeah, shocking. That like, is that's, shocking. That was like, crazy. Oh shit! Like, yeah. Okay, good. Like, good for him. But I think his and his next album, it's only me. I think it, I, I'm gonna look it up. I don't remember that one. Wasn't that the high? numbers for that one? But yeah, it it's like mo- was- mostly like, and then like there's a nigga like Rod Wave. Rod does like 100k first week every album he drops. Yo, which is like r- Rod has a surprisingly strong core fan yeah. base. Yeah. And when I saw he filled out the Barclay Center mm-hmm. and the people who who were on my timeline who were there, mm-hmm. all I'm gonna say is the hood love Rod. Yeah, no, no, like, fucking Rod Wave. And and women too. Yeah. It was like mm-hmm. the bitches that would be like, "Don't buy me no fucking Telfar." Mm-hmm. Like those are the bitches that was at the Rod. Wave, yeah. so. he, and like he's a good example for artists like these new age artists and like 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 you said he has a nice fan base he has a nice he has a nice core yeah. that's yeah. gonna keep him around for as long as he wants to drop music yeah, yeah. he don't gotta do gimmicky stuff yeah, yeah. He, just straight it, music it took a little bit longer than other niggas but once it once it gets on it's, it's, it's on. on yeah like his his tour is like so like well, you said, like, like he's out the yeah. he sold out the Barclays. He's doing his thing. Yeah, he could probably he could do it again. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, like it's, yeah. it's it's very few guys who are who are doing it, and you know, I I think it'll be interesting if one day we really come in and like, like really like do like a, I don't want to say an audit, but like look at these artists' yeah. careers and like their progression and like what specifically they've done to stand out ahead of people who other niggas crown stars mm-hmm. who can't sell close to them. Mm-hmm. Cause that's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of t- people we're told are stars these days. Niggas don't sell music. Don't hit like tours or like smaller, or, you know, venues than others. So it's just, it's, it's real interesting. You know, the, the whole reality uh, expectations versus reality thing that we kind of see, but talk. yeah, interesting time. So, and also a uh, little baby, it's only me. 216,000 first week. So that really? was that was October 2022. So he actually went up from wow. uh, my turn. Yeah. But yeah, I I, I I don't think his next album is going to sell as as well as these these ones did. Um cuz this was in in the in the midst of his Amazon doc. Mm-hmm. He he did something with Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. He had a series with Axe. Like he had, he was he had, on fire. Yeah, he yeah. was he, he was he was everywhere. He was on top Everybody of the world. Everybody was lying. Like okay. he was, people were really touting him as the nigga to take over when the big three is done. And I was, I, I, I liked him, but I was always like, are y'all sure? Are, I think that's what sure? made me go so anti mm-hmm. Lebe because it was just like, no, 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 no. Yeah, it was that. And it was all the Lil Wayne comparisons of like, all right, that's you, you what, niggas is bugging. That's what made me be like, nah, the niggas suck. You bugging. Y'all wildin'. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> y'all bugging. Wow, um, what a board meeting. So, yeah, we want to hear your thoughts on our thoughts, on what Tyler had to say. Um, so, yeah, y'all let us know. But that is our episode for the day. Um, <laughs> one of the funniest we've recorded all season. <laughs> Non-stop laughter. Um, this was good. You was all, nice. go go listen to Timmy Turner by design when you get some free time. And you got to snap. Yeah, you, you, you have to. You have to. And tell me what tribe. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let us know which tribe that you think he, <laughs> yeah, think he, think he made it came from, or you um, know. But yeah, yeah, that's our episode. So for the gang, uh, all their AKs are long, so I'm not going to repeat them all. But you know, uh, for uh, Mister w- w- Where There's a Will, There's a Way. Uh, for Miss uh, Inside But Outside, and for the Bald Nigga Bombshell, we want y'all to stay safe, stay humble, and of course, stay busy.